and thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth Roots. Ready? Our Wait, intro. Play, play, play I did that your again? voice doing our intro. Yeah. Play, play it again. Yeah. So. The Jerry Jonestown Massacre contains graphic material including offensive language, partial nudity, and completely ridiculous thoughts and opinions that shouldn't be expressed or shared by anyone. We talk about all of our sponsors and events coming up at the end of the show. This week, we do want to highlight right up front our new sponsor, McFly's Pub. You can find them at 6104 LTJG Barnett Road. It's a really complicated address, but it's over here in the River Oaks area, just outside the East Gate for the military base. It is a Back to the Futures themed uh, venue with just a really cool vibe. They got live music there all the time, and they're always doing something interesting. So go give them some love. Again, that is McFly's Pub. And to the owners over there at McFly's, thank you for being part of the Fort Worth Roots podcast. And then one event I'll tell you about right up front. It's coming up this weekend, Friday and Saturday. I believe starting at 4 o'clock both days, they're going to have multiple bands on two stages at Lola's. If you've not been there to the new Lola's, it is an amazing establishment. And they're going to have a ton of bands and vendors and all sorts of stuff. It's called the Psychedelic Panther and is a psychedelic-themed event. Fort Worth Roots Podcast will be there hanging out, taking pictures with you guys, and just having a good time. We'll be covering the event, recording with some of the bands out there. It's just going to be a good time. Today's episode does come with a parental advisory. This is brought to you uh, mostly in part by Matt Stubbs, but we did have a really good time. And as the episode continues, you see that we lighten up more and more until by the end of the episode, we're talking over each other. It's, it's just it's really complicated, but we're glad you stopped by today. Right at the beginning of the episode, we're going to expose you to AI and how it is uh, possible now to clone someone's voice well enough that you can get them to say literally anything. It's really creepy. It's kind of fun. But I think that uh, what you're going to hear is going to alarm you because whenever we play these tracks uh, produced by our guest today, none of these words came out of my mouth. I didn't write the script. Uh, I'm totally not liable for what they made me say. But it's very interesting. Wild stuff. It's crazy, the technology that we have these days. Our two guests today are the host of the longest running podcast in North Texas. They're good friends of mine. I just love hanging out with these dudes. And I'm excited to see what other kind of crazy shenanigans we can get into. We already went to the Visit Fort Worth annual event together. We've been to multiple events together. And uh, we're always trying to find different ways that we can collaborate between our two shows. You can find the Jerry Jonestown Massacre podcast on all streaming services. And if you look them up on Facebook, it's going to tell you, are you sure you want to proceed to this site? Yeah, they've got a reputation. <laughs> One last time, in case you missed it the first time I said it, this does come with a parental advisory. That's enough talking out of me. Please give it up for my friends, Dustin Snyder and Matt Stubbs. Let's start the show! I da, like da, it though. Da, 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 this da, is the way. Look, he just hits record and goes. I like it. And he didn't even knows. warn us. You just, you just hit the beat and flow. He's just I like, do, I do it every time. <laughs> just hit the beat and flow. I uh, like it, man. I've gotten uh, 20 minutes into a conversation with somebody before and they're like, Are we recording? Yes. Yeah. We've been recording the entire do. time. <laughs> I'm recording since you took a piss at QT <sighs> down the road. I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna surprise you with this, but now that you're already recording, we'll just see here. So, what are you doing here? Okay, you're trying to send up. some stuff to Bluetooth so he I'm can gonna play. I'm gonna Bluetooth. It, huh? Let's see here. Look at this Let's technology this we got. Let's see if it works. Cast it, baby. <laughs> hey guys, it's your old buddy Andrew. And when I'm not busy swinging raccoons around by their tails and smashing their heads into trees, I do a podcast called Fort Worth Roots. Every one of you listening to this right now should like and subscribe to it. I started doing this podcast as a way to reach out to local Fort Worth folks that do good things in our community, but I've turned it into an excuse to pursue the great Mayor Matty Parker for a one-on-one -on -one interview to express my love for her. <laughs> See, with the angle of having a microphone in front of her and doing an interview, it, it won't no make mistakes. the secret date that I've set up seem so anything. creepy. Like, that was perfect. So, Mayor Parker, really good job, dude. let's have a date. I mean, interview together. Please. What is off. going That's on? Great, How dude. did you? Is that all like Chat GPT or whatever? AI, homie. Would you like another one? 
It's not chat GPT. Oh my god. What this is th- creepy. Hey guys, it's your old buddy Andrew Turner from the Fort Worth Roots podcast. My voice. I'm here and also subscribe and follow the Fort Worth Roots podcast on all social media platforms and podcasting apps. I love you, Mayor Maddie Parker. <laughs> How is Man, this she's happening? Hear that. Would you like another one? Yeah, but before you play another one, and by the way, man, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, explain to me what's happening right now because I feel like my head's going to explode. <laughs> this, that's my voice. Yeah, we haven't even started drinking yet. Look that's at you. been You're going on for two. As soon as they drop this stuff, this has been going on. This is my Dustin. voice, though. All right, so we could. We're trying to figure out a way that we don't have to do shows anymore. Yeah. And we can just AI we can just load everything mail them in. in there. So well, I mean, nobody, we're, nobody. Uh, we're getting close. We're we halfway there right yeah. now. Like, <laughs> not that we do a lot of work anyway, but this would be. <laughs> we really don't want to do. It. <laughs> I yeah. think it'd be more work for us to do AI than it would be just. I, yeah, because you'd have it. to type and stuff. Yeah, we well, type I, it all out. I'm sure there's some kind of software or something we could do. Uh, talk to text. Yeah, when we're. When we're getting it together, okay. Right? Bring bring it back. Explain this. Okay, please, so please. a few years ago, you know, all this AI stuff started started breaking out, going crazy, and Adobe Labs put out a beta that was a voice synthesizer okay. program. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I am a subscriber to Adobe Cloud for all the professional stuff I do. I need it, and when you're on there, you can get their beta stuff if you're a subscriber to the cloud. Well. They made it available for one day, and they took it back off. And, you know, you can download it to your machine, but if you're part of the cloud, they can then remove it because it was crazy good. Yeah. How, you know, the stuff that people just suddenly started putting out. And immediately it was abused. Immediately. Yeah. Like everything. So I've been sitting around. That's been about, like, three years ago. So I've been waiting and waiting, and I've been researching and watching and looking at all these different companies that are putting out. Uh, AI voice synthesis. Mm -hmm. And I got hooked up with one that I signed up for probably a year and a half ago. They finally hit me back up. I was like, hey, it's here. We're ready to roll out. We need some beta testers. So I beta tested for a while and it was hit or miss. And you got to kind of go in there. There, There's sliders and stuff to play with things. Like you can make someone sound more straight and narrow. Yeah. Or you can make someone sound more energetic and it will pull the um inflections out a little more sure um it still doesn't space right like i'm playing with it like if you if you put a period sometimes it'll see that period sometimes it won't and if you put multiple periods it will completely change the inflection Mm. So, do you have to know where to put a semicolon? Because I suck at that. Nobody knows. Nobody, knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That's like the Da Vinci place, Code of, of yeah. language. That, They're that, just there. That, that's I mean, already that's like, like we're we're losing. Hey, parts. I can't even figure that out. We're losing parts of the English language, and that was the first casualty right there. The semicolon was. really was. So <laughs> I hated it anyway, though. <laughs> Nobody liked the semicolon. It, it's kind of funny because the uh, Funky Panther guys were did a whole show about AI, and like as I'm listening to that show, I get the email and says, "Okay." We're we're going live with this, and you can start playing around with it, or or using it for your for stuff in your industry. Playing around, you have mastered it already. So so I <laughs> I was like, all right, well, I'll start building this stuff out. And at the time, so during the beta, you could only use their voices. When it came out of the beta and was public. That's when the voice synthesizer was really there. And their voices they have in there are pretty good. They're pretty decent. They sound pretty... You, I got in there and was playing around and made them air out quite a bit. Yeah. You wanted to see what you could do to crash it? I did yeah. the same thing. Anytime <laughs> but I it will Chad. say anything. No holds barred. Unedited. You yeah. can have it say whatever swear words you want. You can have it go on a tirade, whatever. And when the voice synthesis come out, that's when I started collecting. Have you done any videos too yet? No. See, the video aspect kind of helps, I think, because you're yeah. distracted by the videos, you're hearing the words, mm-hmm. so you don't pick up on the uh, artifacts that come through. Yeah. But I've only done Javier, okay. uh, Jeff Lord, and now you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an honor. So you know what you could do, <laughs> actually, as a podcaster? You So, Andrew, you could have a show and interview... Your show. You'd Dude, be, that you, would be you, cool. Fort Worth Roots Interviews would do Fort an interview Roots. with Fort Worth Roots. If you, if Can you, we do that? 
it'd I mean, be it a might. lot of editing. I could get you in there, but it'd be <laughs> yeah. a lot of editing. That's, that would be a ton be of Okay. All right. So you've kind of described uh, what's going on here, but th- as far as capturing my voice and turning it into something that you can use like that, how did you do that? So we're all dumbasses and have our voice out there all over the web. Yeah. Well, I just go grabbed grab your. Something. Today, mm-hmm. when I got home from work, I took a shower. Got cleaned up for you to look all nice and clean and sexy. I appreciate that. I just slapped some deodorant on. So I sat down with my laptop, downloaded your colon show, the one you just did <laughs> that's just up, grabbed the intro, diced it up into pieces so it's easier for it to read through. It took three minutes and then just started typing out prompts for it to say. So you needed how much actual material? The company says all they need is a minute of audio. It's better. T- it's good to feed them about twenty minutes mm-hmm. uh, to twenty-five minutes. Gives you a pretty large vocabulary. Yeah, is is what you want to put in there, and God, it's so unbelievable. They want. It, it's cool because like, like I can go back, and like on Jeff's, I only use like nine or ten samples. I can load in another fifteen because they at the they want twenty-five samples to make it perfect. But I only loaded 10 because I did his real quick. Yours, I think I loaded in, I don't know, about 20. Yeah. 21 samples. That sounds crazy. I'm waiting for Elon to put out the stuff where you just kind of put that thing in your head, and all of a sudden your vocabulary is expanded by like yeah. 14 million words or something have like they, that. Have Ooh. they put that in a human yet? They're going to. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, sure they, they, they probably haven't talked about it because, I mean, that's... You know what? China that's probably real has. Let's be, let's oh, China, be honest. China, China yeah, probably that's has. That's real man. shifty. <laughs> yeah. Jack will. You know they've All done right. it. So you've got, you've got another one loaded up? Well, I've got two. I've got this one here. So I've got an idea for a sound clip. Um, oh, have you had an... <laughs> so, so you know how I do my intros, right? Yeah. And then you can plug it in. And then I can play it. So you ready? Well, the one I would do for that is ready. Our Wait, intro. Play, play, I play did that your again? voice doing our intro. Yeah, play, play it again. Yeah. So. The Jerry Jonestown massacre contains graphic material, including offensive language, partial nudity, and completely ridiculous thoughts and opinions that shouldn't be expressed or shared by anyone. Listener discretion is advised, and may God have mercy on your soul. Now everyone relax your because coming at you from the Temple of I, it's the Jerry Jonestown Massacre. So am I listening to AI? <laughs> that's awesome. or what's going on yeah, that, that's how <laughs> what was, Who did that music in that? Uh, that's, that's my his, music. That's, that's my intro music. music. Oh, really? Who did it? Uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, Matt Nevesky from Blue October. Yeah. Oh, that's The bass cool. player yeah, from Blue like October. It. Out of uh, Orb it's Recording cool. Studios in yeah. Dripping Springs, Texas. That's cool. We should do that. <laughs> we should make our own intro music. We should. Cool. Well, I mean, sure. we've been asking then people for now 10 years. And then we'd have to do some more work. No, we'd do it. And we just need to reach out to um, uh, what's their names and let them let us use that intro song. Oh, The Fugitive? The Fugitive. Yeah. We just need that to, is awesome. That's the awesomest intro ever. Yeah. Now, I have this one. Um, and this is the last one I have. Uh, I put together four real quick. There was, the, of course, the, the Pleased to Maddie Parker. But I thought this one would be kind of silly. To play. Let's see. Have you had an accident on the highway with an 18 wheeler, or have you not been paid wages because you have had to miss work because of an accident that wasn't your fault? I'm Andrew Turner, the Pod Hawk, and I'm here to get you back your lost wages. I'll fight for you to get you the maximum amount for your settlement, rather it be payment in cold hard cash or hookers or blow. <laughs> Wait, who am I kidding? I'm just a podcaster and host the Fort Worth Roots podcast released every Monday on your favorite podcasting platforms. So subscribe and follow the Fort Worth Roots podcast on all social media platforms and podcasting apps. Do it right now. I'd listen to your radio station shift. (laughs) If you had a shift, a good, like you had uh, the PM drive or something like that, I'd be like, okay, I'll listen to this guy. I don't know. Next week on our show, he may be calling ladies to the stage. Midway what? through our show. What? What are we talking about? I'll just program it where he's what? like, Oh, yeah. Can we get Trixie to come to the main stage? <laughs> Trixie on the main stage. Both of us are like strippers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is, what? That what, is that what, is that is what we're that going after next this? week? Ha- has that happened at the temple yet? <sighs> it seems like it should have. We've had, we've had a lot of things happen yeah. at the temple that... 
Yeah, there's yeah. been a lot of crazy there's things been. at the temple and in our where we used to uh, uh, rehearse. Like our bands would practice and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Especially when I was jamming with uh, Johnson, you know, from Whiskey yeah. Dick. Uh, we <laughs> there's some wild stuff. There's some wild stuff that's happening. And then Denton too. We we because there was a while. I lived in eight uh, in Denton for eight years. Yeah. And so when we were up there, we'd get into some gnarly stuff too. <laughs> So for the listeners that don't know who you are, they've been living under a rock. If, if they know what a podcast is and they live in this area, then they should know what the Jerry Jonestown Massacre right podcast is. Ray from the is. Me thinks, thinks we're internet radios. Yeah, we're just internet radios. Internet yeah, radios. I've tried to tell him, man, dude, we're not internet we're, radios. We're not any ra- internet radios. Yeah, 10 years. 10 years. This of, June. And I, I keep telling people it's the longest running podcast in North Texas. I don't even know if that's accurate. but It is accurate. It's a lot come as, and go, um, <clears throat> for sure. Continuous. We've put out a show for 514 weeks as of this week. It's incredible. You yeah. guys are madmen. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous, but it, now it's just like, yeah, we got to just keep doing <laughs> it because now it's, let's see how long we can do it. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm worried because of our trip coming up. Like, how are we going to do that? Well, we got to put something out there. Yeah, way. we will, I'm sure. Well, we'll I mean, I'm taking, I'm taking anything, the I'll gear take my up phone there. and be like, okay, I'm uh, very scared yeah. for my life. So this time. I think this it might be over. Dustin's really done going? it this time. Big uh, Ben, JJTM oh, yeah, yeah. versus Big Ben. You yeah. know all about this, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we talked about uh, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll probably take my recorder out there. My memory gets real bad whenever well, we start uh, throwing back shots. We're so. actually going to start a, a <laughs> uh, festival out there too, like a rave of, if you will, right? Uh, I of, guess of uh, terrible intros <laughs> to yeah. songs. It's going to be an AI rave. <laughs> And that's and what we're gonna do is we're gonna wake up the wilderness each day that we're there to uh, a selected song that both him and I, Dustin and I, have approved, and uh, rocks. You know, I'm starting like to remember rocks some out, of this. Dude. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm scared of when scientists make a trip out to Big Ben after we've been there and it's realize good. that it's all the wildlife has been ran off. <laughs> like they're just like those. Yeah, you know, it's been too loud. But yeah. We do uh, we do these trips every once in a while, and this is we've done JJTM versus Vegas mm-hmm. uh, with our buddy. Ugh, uh, man, I don't even remember that. Uh, with our money, our buddy uh, money with our buddy Matt Robotuner Thomas. Tried to knock my Matt tooth Hill. out. Yeah, <laughs> tried to knock my tooth out in old he Vegas. Did. He y'all also did a, tried to give you a foot massage. Yeah, <laughs> y'all, y'all did a New York trip last year, didn't we? You? Did JJTM versus New York, <laughs> and y'all went and saw. Uh, I did not Rage? get a foot massage. Yeah, Rage uh, up in New York. That's where uh, I needed a foot massage. I did. I really didn't need one that bad at Vegas. I mean, I thought about it. You saw it. Yeah. I was thinking about it. And Thomas was with us. Was he like, could have done it. I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about getting my foot rubbed. And then I looked at Dustin and, and, and Gary, and they were had their phones out immediately. I was like, no, 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 Matt. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, <laughs> stop, stop. Stop, Matt. Yeah, um, Matt was with Just us. Just because he chipped my tooth. Matt was with us again in, in uh, New York City. And, uh, Which was rad. We got Can't wait his, to go back uh, there. We got his... Uh, alter ego skip redstone banned from youtube for yeah our live streaming i, I think it was youtube <coughs> wasn't it? he got banned for he got a he got a little like 13 day ban or something what did he do that. did he fucking say something like i think like i said something about anti-semitic or some shit i think I, he had a bunch of his fans from philly on there and i kept saying how much philly sucks and it's oh, a terrible that, city oh man and, and they got him banned <coughs> how does that dude, get you banned? man i don't know just talking, we try, right? just talking a terrible city. noise to the guys down I've, I've up in uh, Philly. Do, yeah. What do you think about my idea if the Cowboys would have played Philly to go to the uh, to the uh, like in the playoffs that we would get in contact with some douchey podcast up in Philly and just start talking noise to them and, and getting on each other's shows we and all done that. that. They, there's people up there that would have worked that out. The Cowboys had to lose. Yeah. Well. Hey, we, we did a full like preseason guessing game yeah we, yeah that you out. owe us a bottle of whiskey <laughs> yeah we talked about it you, you not hear that episode we show, broke man. it all down i was there for you it. don't listen to our show i do I, you're one of the few shows that i'm able to keep up because we went over that i would wager i listened to I won. more episodes of jjtm than you do of fort worth Roots. i won I, oh, I, <laughs> well, the problem is <laughs> him listening to any shows yeah there's I, my, I have the most. I I'm the, the one who lists all the shows. I have yeah. the most low budget like stereo system in my car. I, I st- it's terrible. So <laughs> when I'm driving around, like I have to sit down. To, usually to listen to a show, I have to sit down. Hopefully they have it on YouTube, and I just watch it and then kind of do stuff around the house. Yeah. And the, 
I would love to just have a nice system where I could just Bluetooth like a normal person into the speakers. Yeah. Into the speakers, <laughs> like I've done before in other cars. It's it's but nope. It's an impossible task, man. We've got so many friends that are podcasters, you just cannot keep up. You get your best listening though when you're driving around and you're in your vehicle. That's when I do it. And yeah. that's I, I think you and I fall under that same umbrella where we spend a lot of time in the cab of our trucks. Naked, driving around naked. and working and stuff. A lot of windshield uh, time. Picking up small children. <laughs> well, and um <laughs> yeah, you gotta, we, go, you gotta go overseas for that. We do have to go overseas. <laughs> I don't know if we can say that type of stuff on this show, man. He's got sponsors and stuff. He's well, got, so he's so, after uh so I, I Maddie had, Parker. Oh yeah, yeah, you could do this. She's never coming on like, the show after that. Label oh, this she show as the 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 uh root the Fort Worth roots after dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's like perfect. That, dude. No, I I tell people that because like my mom is a big advocate, she'll she'll listen to the show and she's like, "Hey, look, you know, you, you you're trying to have sponsors, you're trying to promote yourself as kind of a professional. You don't need to be cussing like that." Yeah, I'm like you can't say, dude. Mind if you, your own if, if you if you, if you, if you <laughs> no, seriously, business, dude. Mom. <laughs> if you have uh, sponsors and people that you're trying to get advertisement money from, right? Yeah, you, there's zero percent chance you can say. <laughs> Somehow well, we, we said it we twice. Do. So. And we have. And we, <laughs> you, wait, I mean, what, what would you say another one is, Dust? Well, we learned. See, we can't say that shit. Can't okay, that what's shit. happening? <laughs> <laughs> we can't. What, what, what's that? The octopus uh, pornography that you like? What's that called? Too? We can't. Uh, we can't say that anymore. Tentacle, tentacle porn. porn. No, no. There's the another. Hentai? Yeah, hentai. hentai. Yeah, yeah, we can't. Yeah. We can't say that. You gotta yeah, stop I'm somewhere, way into man. Hentai. This feels like a calculated attack. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say, uh, Ala. <laughs> Alaskan pipeline in here, dude. You can't, can't be saying Al- You can't be saying Alaskan pipeline. No. 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 Sounding. No, no, no. So what I do with episodes like this is I just put a <laughs> disclaimer up front, and people can listen. And yeah, yeah, you're gonna lose some listeners, but uh, you know it happens to the best. Of us. <laughs> but the ones that matter will stick around. Yeah, yeah. it's just Weak. like it's Weak. just like the uh, Jeffrey Lord, um, the Funky Town podcast. Host, go on. That you know. Yeah, what you just what happened? <laughs> did I just, you just wanted to make sure out? that everybody knew that. And yes, I did. Stroke, <laughs> stroke out. But I just wanted to make sure that we everybody knew I was talking about the Lord. Yeah, the right. Lord. Jeffrey. Yes. Lord. Yeah. And dude, what was my train of thought? You're, te- you're asking he us about us. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He said. He said, dude. He goes because I always think that sometimes our humor. I'm like, dude, we can't do this. It's like, you know, when when um, when. Uh, is it? It's always Sonny did blackface. Yeah, you know, you, you, you're that. Everybody thought it was hilarious, but they're the only ones that could do that, and they still they're always on the edge of all their comedy and stuff. I don't think everybody thinks we're hilarious. No, that's the thing. <laughs> and too. I don't think everybody but thinks here's where I'm going. Hilarious. <laughs> I don't know where you're going. This. What no. is happening? Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Turn this around on me. I am the asshole now. <laughs> well, uh, no, anyway, like Jeff, no, no, Jeff has said saying, in the past is if you can make it through the intro of the show, then you're then good you're, to go. Yeah. People yeah. that are offended with us are already out two minutes in, so you don't have to worry about it, Stubbs, is what he said. And Which that's includes when, the, the, uh, the main overseer of the Bass Hall who listened to our show one time and, was, and didn't make it out of the intro. Sasha? No. The um, uh, the main uh, what's his? It's a guy. He's the manager of the mass uh, the bass hall. Oversees oh, okay. it, never sees everything. Yeah, and he didn't make it past our intro. And sent how do a you message. know that? Oh, he uh, sent a message. Had a friend that hey is connected with him. Was like <laughs> questions. I don't know what you asked me to listen to, but that's not. This is weird, but I've thought about this. Okay, the bass, <laughs> the, the the family the that's fish? given the the oh. hang on, the family that's given uh, Fort Worth. A, you know, beautiful places to hang out, drink, insult people if you want to, uh, just do whatever, right? Fort made Fort Worth big part of Fort Worth. Is there anybody in that family named Black or Sand? Because of black bass and sand, sand bass? Ba- yeah, there's got to be, right? There's no way they don't have anybody in their family Guadalupe named Black. Bass? Yeah. Or, or C. Big, hey. Or C bass? C, yeah. First name Big, middle name Mouth. Bass. There you go. What See, about dude, a red one? There's, <laughs> there, I'm sure, red bass. I'd be like, okay, that's a cool name. I mean, that's a like, very that's cowboy the coolest name. Last name. It is. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm, well, I'm red. And bass red is bass. a very cowboy name, too. Bass. It is. We're so, man, one. I would definitely know. I bet that there is a red bass somewhere. Up to one. I'm one. red bass. Cowboy. Oh, cowboy. And it's cool. Like, you couldn't do that with crappie. Hi, I'm, I'm Bill Crappie. And you'd Good be like, goddamn to meet you. Or what? It, what? What's the other fish that all of us hate? <laughs> oh, the uh, carp. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> a Matt drum. Car. What? Um, well, drums all right. Drums all right. Yeah, drums cool. yeah. <laughs> drums cool. Drums a cool name. Hey, I'm Don Catfish. They'd be like, whoa, this guy proposition. Like, what's this guy running in town? Yeah, that's a he, that sounds like a human trafficker. Catfish is a nickname though. Like, like it has to be. I'm Don Catfish Smith. <clears throat> yeah, and you know that it's guy, like Dr. Gambles. Red Duke. A yeah. lot. A oh, lot. Excessively. <laughs> excessively. Let's talk about Visit Fort Worth. <laughs> All right. Oh, is that what we're here for? That was, Matt, a, that was a few weeks ago, man. We've slept a bit. But you made it. You were I did late, make it. but you made it. Yeah, I felt bad, too. What, did yeah. he beat Javi? Uh, no, Javi made it. Dude, Javi uh, before him. made it there before you. That's that's Yeah, he, he jogged there. That they all did, yeah. was a really fun day. In fact, we want to turn every Friday in Fort Worth into just drinking day. Yeah, and I need we go donations to a four day work since week. that day, too, by the way. Yeah, my I looked at my bank account. Hard. <laughs> horrible, man. Yeah. Fucking horrible. It, it was wasn't that day. I was hung over the next day because I kept drinking. <laughs> but it was the... He's, he's still drinking, by the way. Yeah, I'm from still then. drinking from then. Same. But it was the looking at the bank account and going, whoa. Yeah. What happened? Seeing all the locations on your bank account. Was, yeah. Whoa. How many places did we hit up? I'm surprised Man. Wells Fargo didn't like send me a message. It, go, I think, are you all right? <laughs> I think I did get one. You did? I think I got one. It's like, dude, you haven't bar hop like this since like fucking 2003. <laughs> well, I was going to say. <laughs> oh. 63 wasn't a lot. I don't know. I was going to say like 2019, though. Like, it's yeah, been yeah. a minute since I've. Before just, COVID, pre COVID. Pre COVID, yeah. yeah. So there were drinks served at the convention center for the visit. For That's Fort mistake Worth. number one. <laughs> How about we not talk about the drinks and we talk about the actual event? Well, I think on both of our we, shows, we, 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 we just right talk about it. drinking. I don't remember a whole lot after. Well, that was a big. <laughs> that's, that was one of the biggest things that Dustin and I have ever been a part of as far as crowd wise goes. Like, we did a, we did a stint. Uh, where we were uh, going to the Fort Worth Weekly uh, Music Awards, and they got pretty big for a minute, right? And uh, we we accepted a an award for our friend's band, the Methinks from Halton City. Shout out! And uh, it wasn't that big a deal, you know. So we go into that thing. There's like freaking like there are a, a thousand people. Yeah, there. that was insane. What was the head? I, I think people. it was over a thousand. And no, it was. It, what was, I thought they said they capped it at a thousand. Cause what it, was cool though was like, you know, you hear these big businesses like uh, BNSF. Yeah. Oh, American uh, Airlines. Well, not. The, I'm talking Pinnacle about Bank. the. Uh, I'm talking about the the, the like uh, Billy Bob's. The guys from Billy Bob's sitting two tables away from us. Like, yeah. damn, dude, there's the Billy Billy Bob's family and friends right there, man. That's fucking cool. Yeah. The guys and from then, DFW Airport that just run the whole airport. They were there. They had Bill uh, DFW there. Bank of Texas, yeah. Did they had oh, they had John Bank of Texas. That's uh, a good family, the Bank of Texas. The, the entire TCU uh, Foundation, they were all there. So, well, and, sororities, or uh, what? No, huh? Then there was the the cheerleaders. The, who was the the guy on the side? He was I don't no, know what his Brian. What the position Brian, or title he's for a, that guy was? He's a uh, he's an awesome guy. He's Brian he's doing, Yeah, he's done radio for a while. He's friends with Dustin. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, on BAP. The guy. They okay. they uh, he'll he'll call in sometimes and give him the down. He's not. I don't think he's on air right now in the mornings. I think he's just doing TCU football and sports. He may be, but he's a big fan of the name of the show. I don't yeah. know if he's ever listened to the show, but he's a big fan of the <laughs> name that? of the show and likes to talk about it on. <laughs> WBAP out of all things. That's hilarious. That was for that festival down there, and Dustin was like, you want to go to this? I was like, man, it sounds like it's going to suck. It was fun as shit. <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is funny is nobody covered it. Like, everybody was thinking it was going to suck, but he I was, was there, the only one that he was called really in. down there covering it. There are a bunch of photographers from all over the country there yeah. doing stuff, but I was the only one there. Yeah. And then it's at AT&T Stadium, which is... Yeah. Bigly. Well... <laughs> My little <laughs> playground. You can't, you can't say that on our show, man. We get complaints. So, Bigly? Susie, yeah. I got to run around I do everywhere. Um, Bigly. Because security was the same. They used the same security that they use at the game, so I knew everybody. So, yeah. I was just like, oh, let's just roll into here. Let's roll into there and do this and do that. And so, you had like unrestricted coverage. And access. it was kind of silly watching the whole inside, and then BAP wanted a, a ground report well, <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> How it was, and I gave them a full report, and it was funny. They didn't like it. No, they liked no, no, it. No, no, no. They yeah, were yeah. they. The problem with everybody likes okay. the name, and then when they meet us, they're like, "That's when they don't like us." <laughs> so whoever set up Kaboo, they signed like a ten-year contract to do it repeatedly. Mm -hmm. I think they went a little big for their britches. 
the first time around yeah, they and did try to hard. do a little too much. I think it still could be done in a, a little bit smaller of a scope, but um, there were all these photos and stuff, like the Observer. I don't, the Weekly wasn't allowed to be there. Why? Because um, they're just not Turf Wars? I don't know. But the um, like the Observer wrote up a bunch of crap about it, and um, so did uh, Pete over at um, uh, whatever his little outlet was in Dallas. I can't think of what it's called right now. He's going to kill me. Track? No, uh, yeah, Central Track. Central Track. Like, yeah. they were all bagging on it yeah. because they were taking pictures of Friday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon when no one's there. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, here's Blue October playing. And look, no one's in here. And while Blue October was, was very playing, supportive. was like, yeah. there were bands out, there were two other stages outside. So you had competing stuff going on. Yeah. and But... Friday evening, the place got packed. Saturday, the place was packed. Sunday, the place was packed. And what was the event called? Kaboo Fest. Hmm. Yeah. And it, it turned out... This is the killer? There's the killer. no who, way who, they who made their money the whole back. Thing? There's no way they Dustin, made Dustin, who was it that headlined the whole thing? Was it uh, the Killers? Uh, killers were Friday night. Kid Rock was Saturday That's night. That's right. It was Kid Rock. And, was the, Sing, and yeah. Sting was Sunday night. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, I mean, if you want to go see a bunch of bands all at once that it cover every genre in the world it was great but um execution could be slimmed down and uh i just think it was it was hitting too big and it, it, what, it when did this happen this is this was it, it got everything oh, this, wow, this okay. is right what i was gonna say COVID. too is everything got every, everything got fucked by covid uh fortress fest was a good idea greatly done they were going the right avenue with uh, their bands. Uh, they were starting to have rock. They they just needed a it's little bit more good. heavier, like a little more uh, like alternative yeah. rock or something. We were going to sit down and have a talk with them. And uh, them same with then, then, then and then and then then they they did the Kabuka Fest, which I love the name Kabu, not Kabuka, <laughs> Kabu, Kabuki, Kabu. or or. or uh, Kabuka. It's not, a, it's not a Bukaki. It's not a magician. Is it Bukaki? You gotta I go overseas so, yeah. for that. Anyway. Man. Sorry, sorry. You do have to go overseas for bukkake parties, especially a bukkake uh, a bukkake festival. Wow, that's messy. So anyway, only in Thailand. That's the thing that that I really, you know, how there's negatives and positives that have come out of COVID, like you Paul know, Stanley, and there's, <laughs> they, yeah, like positive Paul Stanley. Yes, and negative. And there's Paul negative Stanley. Paul Stanley, right? Right. There's two different people. Yeah, and and what they do is they just flip the makeups. They're, they're like, the yin and yang, like that. Yeah. But anyway, the yin and yang Stanley. The thing, one of the things that sucked is that there was these budding uh, festivals that were starting to develop in DFW that that were going to, I think, do really well and be really fun. And then COVID came in, and I just man, that the these festival guys, these promoters and stuff that like was it Margin Walker. Back then, no, or someone was helping the booking at some of those festivals. Oh in yeah, Texas. they may have been helping out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I just they ran right at smack into COVID, and it just sucked. That it just has taken the wind out of it. I think Marja Walker just pulled out. Of, they just just Austin now. They pulled out of Dallas. So as, far as, as far as music festivals, I've been cooking this idea up, and I've talked a little bit about it to you and some other podcast constituents. But a never-ending, revolving yearly citywide music series yeah and we we choose nine different locations around fort worth different venues that can handle at, at very least an acoustic set from a, a solo artist mm -hmm. um and then places like the post that could do a five piece is it one day no it's going to do it over the year it's going to be february to september september would be the big event where we take all the artists that played in the series and mm -hmm. put them on one stage for a festival with senders like cool and idea. all sorts I'd be of down stuff. With that. Yeah. So I'm in the middle of trying to put that together. I want to launch it 2024. Well, why don't so you talk February. to some guys? I'm working on it. Why don't you pick like, up the reach phone, out homie? to some bros? This is what we're doing. I'm reaching out to the bros. Well, right you now. don't want to do it on on camera, Mike, where <laughs> other people can steal this, but <laughs> they can we try. Can, they we can, can go sit ahead. down and I, talk about this for real because we used to put on shows. Um, Basically, yeah, it was really our cool name, but too. Susie would help us out, reaching out to everybody. We've had several people help us out with them. Yeah, and we put on big shows there for a while. What was that gnarly pack one? Pack out that Lola's, we, yeah, pack that, out my birthday the show. At, uh, Lola's, the gnarly one we were in on with Dwayne. 
Oh, fuzzed out fest. Yeah, fuzzed yeah. out fest. Um, that guy. But we would we packed out venues with you know our buds and friends and just advertising and I mean there's still there's a I think it needs to come back because like we talked about on our episode about visit Fort Worth. There's not a good music festival, and whatever's happening right now in the stockyards, this Fort Worth Music Conference, I've seen a lot of video they've posted, and I've seen a lot of video other people have posted. It doesn't look well attended, and the problem is, it is Fort Worth um, based, you know, a Fort Worth music, they say it's a Fort Worth music conference, but I can't tell you any artist looking at that. That's actually from Fort Worth. Yeah. Um, and and I, it kind of freaks me out. I talked to, um, I'm not going to name drop, but somebody from the weekly. And uh, he was telling me exactly what went into <laughs> that and how they chose the, uh, not not who you're thinking of, oh, okay. somebody else. Um, but anyway, he was telling me why they picked the bands they did, why they did it the way they did it. And I can't remember verbatim exactly what he told me, but I feel like their hearts were in the right place whenever they put this thing together. But it's not representative of Fort Worth. And I think that's absolutely at all. where it lands flat. Yeah. And tell me a band on that lineup that is promoting and speaking Fort Worth right now. Yeah. It's all country bands. I mean... It's, I think it's meant to attract a, a national audience l- rather than support the Fort Worth musicians. No one's coming here Man. this week of the year. I hate, wrong? To, I hate to, to done that. Hey, seem like guys, what guys, I hate to interrupt you too because it sounds like you're having a great conversation. <laughs> but but you I, gotta, I, 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 I have to bring this up. Himself. <laughs> if I, I know. I don't, can't. Don't kick the power cord. There's stubs. no way that I could continue without bringing this up. Like I, well, I would forget that it was there. You're gonna shit your pants when you see what was sitting. So underneath this, the, he has the raddest the VHS tape, the ever. Chuck Norris. Like this is the raddest video cassette tape I've seen in a podcast in my whole life. And to Matt's or credit, radio, to Matt's credit, even in radio, this is the first. I've time never it, seen that. First time somebody's picked this up. One Man, of the funnest awesome. people I've ever am interviewed. I, am I seriously the first one to bring this up? You interviewed him? Yeah. What? Uh, up at the racetrack? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Okay, so he's holding we, about his chuck uh, yeah, he's got water, water, dude. This, that water's good. So man. Matt found my copy of still preserved, yes. still in the cellophane. Uh, chuck Norris yeah. private lesson, the lean and mean workout, dude. And it's got the it's legend like, on on the front. He's playing, looking, man. He's giving you the steely eyes on the front, and then uh, you know, not not too aggressive uh, of a kick on the back. That's a nice modern yeah, like a little kick. love tap. Dude. Yeah, little, he's just trying to wake you yeah, up there. Just wake you up, and he yeah. gets all the memes. He, about the Chuck Norris, he gets all See, the jokes and he gets all the stuff. Yeah, that, like, like I asked him, I was but, like, "So, who could take you on?" And he goes, "No one. I'm Chuck you, Norris." <laughs> hey, and what I was, was like, the dude, yeah, Billy yeah. Hayes or whatever from uh, from Tybo? Rex Quan- was it Rex Tybo or whatever it was? Yeah, the hell with that guy. What do you what? That's what's, that's the thing. Why would he even put anything out if Chuck Norris did? Like, can you imagine if Chuck Norris and him fought? You're talking about the Tybo guy? No. Yeah, dude. He, Chuck Norris would beat his ass. He There's have no to. one. Chuck Norris would fight. just walk in the room. Yeah. And, and, and no he, one and, can and, take on and, Chuck Norris. Uh, and the, what, what was the guy's name? We don't have it. Do you have a chat room or anything going? No, we spent we're not a bunch live. of money at. Oh, chat we're not room. live? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go we're, ju- on. we're just talking Go to each other. Yeah, yeah. We're just this, we're just we're having a conversation. Trust. Gross. We're yeah. in the circle of trust. Here. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I we don't have headphones. My on. money would be his. Oh, yeah. on him, hundred percent. Yeah, he's what man? He's got to be pushing mid seventies now. Yeah, I mean, it was funny because he got into crazy conversations with us about different things and. Here you go, buddy. Oh, I already Thank have you. one Thank over you. here. No, I appreciate. Oh, it. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Did you Did um, you see what you just picked up? Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. Cool. Did Amplify um, eight one seven. They just were on our show, man. <laughs> we um had a. It was a cool little interview, and then his wife was with him, and she's the one pushing all the water uh, that's being pulled out of his she land. Had to ruin south it. of here, hmm. or in South Texas, or wherever wherever his ranch is. But we were having a lot of fun, and then she's like, talk about the water, talk about the water. And it's like, we already talked about the water, but yes, we'll talk more about the water and blah, blah, blah. He was cool as shit. That's awesome. He was fun. Was he like, sorry about my uh, stupid ass He's wife? Like, <laughs> he looked at us Fuck and goes, her. this she bitch follows me everywhere, and I have no idea who she <laughs> Honestly, is. Honestly, dude. He's like, well, I'm, you're married think- to her. I've been thinking about getting a divorce. He's like, dude, Chuck, I don't know. He's like, like I, I don't know why you would tell us this. 
I'd like to punch her. She'd never feel it, <laughs> and she would just evaporate into the air. And you I was like, I, wow, Chuck Norris, that's a little too much. Hey, hey Dustin. It's a meme. Dustin, it's just a meme. Dustin, do you know uh, anywhere I could uh, take a body? <laughs> I asked him if he ever cried, and he goes, no, I'm Chuck Norris. <laughs> So I gotta wake that up. Continue your uh, your journey. I need to my, hang out with Chuck Norris. My man. stack of stuff that sits on the mantle. Well, this there. is kind of weird. I didn't want to bring this up, but I, I feel like he's asking me to. <laughs> There's the man. That looks like a. That's uh, the man sofa. right before oh, you yeah. go to La La Land. You you see this face? So tell the listeners what you're holding up there, Stubby. Bill, Bill Cosby. The book about fatherhood. fatherhood. It's got a big picture of him. Dustin, you ever seen this right before you went to sleep? I have a couple times. <laughs> So I woke up sore. I uh, I I figured out that I didn't know you were that w- when this was written. Fuck. It was my jaw that was sore. When when this book was written, it was in the middle of whenever he was, I guess, allegedly or confirmed uh, yeah. raping people. So what? That book wrote, looks older than that. No, the book. Well, he was doing. Oh, it. he was doing. Yeah, it. He yeah, was yeah, yeah. He's been doing it for like time. thirty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was literally engaged in, you know, awful acts. Yeah. Whenever he wrote or you know came up with this book for Bill Cosby, I mean, let's fatherhood. talk about this. He Bill Cosby, 30, he had a good thirty-year run, right? <laughs> you know what I'm it? Dude, yeah. I, mean, I don't know, man. Before gotta, he got caught, he'd probably agree with you. This is he something that would. you definitely have to go overseas to joke about, Dustin. But, but go ahead if you want to continue. Uh, no, let's be serious. If you want to do stand up? It's Bill Cosby. Why did he have to do that? You're Bill Cosby. Can I put it down. I'm going to put Bill Cosby down. You're you're Dr. Huxtable, and the women have to be just falling. I, I would watch think. ladies fall for the stupidest shit all the time. Right. Like surely you know, he didn't have any trouble. Some yeah. some Z lister right. from nowhere land comes yeah. walking by, and they're like, "Oh my god, yeah, this is Bill Cosby. He was an A lister. He had a huge show. I Everybody knew who he was." I hear even Matt does pretty good with his level of success. So. Uh, Matt does. <laughs> I mean, he'll walk into yeah. a place and women are like, "Oh my god, it's Matt. Oh my god." I just gotta find the section of the hospital where they put the blind women. <laughs> yeah, and that's where I and men. That's right. I don't so. care. Like, I just I love, love the adoration. Vo- I love his voice. I'm glad I can't see his body. <laughs> <laughs> The, the little dove egg. Covered in brush. The little dove egg comes out. What? But, yeah, you're Bill Cosby. Why do you have to do that stuff? And then why know, do you man. have Felicia Rashad standing up for you? I don't, I don't think anyone's standing up for that's him anymore. That's his wife. Are they? Oh, that's his wife? The Cosby show. I don't oh, think, okay. I think all of them have distanced now, haven't they? I don't know. We got to ask Rudy Huxtable. And is he Is he out? Or is he like gonna get out? No, no, he's, he's out. He's, is he? Yeah, he's yeah, out, yeah. right? Yeah, he, he, he already did his time because he's no. done prison and st- or no, he got let out because of his he, his. He's going blind. No, and he it was. was uh, it was a technicality. Technicality. So, yeah. So he oh, got he got sent, tried and sentenced and sent to prison for what seemed like a really long time, and then <sighs> you know they revised the whole thing, and then he got out on technicality. Basically, what what, what I understand. That's, but yeah, he was released after like serving. I mean, a total of like 18 months for all the rape and oh all the stuff gosh, he got dude. charged Can with. you imagine being a woman that he did that to and find that great news out? Yeah, and not That's only why women hate dudes like that. I wonder they, if any were. Visit Fort, dudes, Fort Worth. Man. Let's talk about Visit Fort Worth. Women, this is why this is why women this this is why women hate dudes is because of the, that type of shit, man. I'm I'm gonna have to title Ugh. this episode like the most canceled episode. Or <laughs> All right, real quick before we go back to that's that's awesome. oh, he this found another awesome. book this on is the probably mantle. The best thing that has been I up tried there. to hunt that down, and it it's not easy to find anymore. That's what, yeah. like what do you got there, difficult. Matt? This is a uh, little golden book which we all love about. About it's called the, it's called my little golden book about Betty White, the the by legend herself. Deborah yeah. Hopkinson, illustrated by Margot Lucas. You don't Are, have Samuel L. Jackson's book? I don't have that yet. The, the kids' there's, book. There's you have Dolly room, Parton's. There's room up here. Yeah. Um, so there's actually some really incredible stories in there, and I love the amount of attention she got her last like ten years of, of life. Like she was she was kind of celebrated by American everybody. culture. Well everybody knew while. it was you know, we gotta get this in. She's great. Yeah. I mean there's no I don't know anybody that hates Betty White. <laughs> If give, you do, give you, them time. Yeah. Give, give them time. I don't know. Who hates Betty Just White? Just give them time. Well, I think she- there it is. You need okay, to be put we, down. Are we up to four now? Now he planned this. I thought, <laughs> you, I thought you were going to do like a show that we were going to send overseas. We are. Oh. Because you got to go overseas. No one. The overseas episode. There you go. Huh? No one hates <laughs> Betty White. Overseas. And if you hate Betty White, you need to be deported from this country immediately. Okay. Now you sound like Ted Cruz. And just. Okay. <laughs> And just 
And it, when they're deporting you, they just drop you in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on that plastic island. No, I promise. He's that mean. island of plastic mm. junk. They're happy. They're in Spain. Was Don't it Bill Burr's? It. The, the, one of the cruises that Bill Burr talks about. And, Where he and, goes by and sees it, plastic. It, it's like a bunch of dumb people and they get blown yeah. up and... What's See. happened is you'll dump a bunch of people on this pla- this island of plastic that's in the middle of the Pacific, and they'll rise up. They'll yeah. make weapons out of plastic. They'll they'll get crazy. You can. Who are these people? They'll build a fortress. And the people we're deporting that hate Betty White. And right. they're going to make weapons out of bottles? They're probably going to be pretty start. upset once we kick them off the country, like the whole big I mean, island. We're like, get the fuck out of here. you got a bunch of people <laughs> that enjoy, that know how to do stuff, that, right. that hate Betty White. You dump them on this plastic island... Makes sense. It only me. takes a few years before they rise up and they I, take over California. And you've seen I want to the see shanks the they make in Locked I Up. And, and I feel like, you like you've seen Locked Up and stuff. They can make a shank out of anything. If they got a bunch anything. of plastic, okay. dude. A and you walk, shank is one thing. He's talking about nuclear arsenals made out of 20-ounce bottles. Do you walk into California yeah, with a shank? <laughs> it's over. Done. Why? Those guys don't have guns. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I forgot about that. Well, I don't either. There was a really unfortunate boating accident. I lost all mine. I have lost all mine too. Yeah. Me too. Even the one I just bought and I'm in debt for and I have to pay it off. Yep. But it's in the bottom of Lake Worth. But it, it was a good <laughs> it was a moment of reflection for me and I have realized That's what you can tell Chuck Norris I, to put the body. I've realized that I don't want to buy any more guns. I don't need that. <laughs> well, it's 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 a hassle in your life. It really is. Yeah. Keeping up, making Cleaning, sure Cleaning, lubricating. What are you doing yeah. on Sunday? Let's go to the range. Yeah. I'm in. I'm down. Okay. Where where are you cool. going? Point yeah. blank, defender. And we'll shoot go down smart. to ETDS. Where is that? I'll bring my M16. Where are you? Waxahachie? You yes, Defender dude. is right down the street. No, nah, man. You this place, do dude. whatever you yeah. want. <laughs> yeah, you can straight up bust out I don't out know cameras. if I like that. No, you can get cameras out no. and start filming a porn. You can do whatever. I'll so show you a video I, I, when we're done. Yeah, been, that's awesome. It's our favorite gun range. I've been uh, thinking about this moment a lot lately. It keeps coming up, but uh, a gun range where people can just do whatever they want sounds terrible. I was a lane <laughs> safety in Mineral Wells one time. Yeah, and, wow. I'm I, tapping I the brakes. It's not everything, but yeah, go I ahead. I just want to tell this story. Because I've been thinking I've been about thinking it about this moment. Uh-oh. This moment. Yes. Should I use my Phil Collins, dude. <coughs> Pants right. are easy. So down. we're up in Mineral Wells. They've He's a, been thinking about this In Mineral moment. Wells? I'll let him run that through real quick. In <laughs> Mineral Wells? gold. Yeah. There's now, a, there's a, the one that's out there by the Shell place? It's either National Guard or Reserve, but the Army. Oh, the Army are, place. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay, yeah. yeah. I know where that's at. Anyway, but all there's right, a so lot of big dick energy out there, huh? Let me tell you about this big dick I've done energy. a bunch of Photoshop shoots in the empty <laughs> barracks. Yeah. We're never they're, getting asked back. They're, they're spooky. They're a little weird. spooky, yeah. yeah. I've, I've spent many a night there. So I'm a, I'm a lane safety, which means I'm watching the people that are shooting the guns, right? And it's uh, the 9 mil qual range, and is that right? Yeah. So this guy is in the prone. He's, he's shooting a pistol while laying down. I think that's right. Anyway, his gun jams... And this guy has been in the military using firearms for over 30 years. I don't like where this is going. He's a first sergeant. I'm standing right next to him. And I already know that these guys, because they're reservists, nothing against the reserves. I was in the reserves, but I'm coming out of active duty, and I'm watching these guys. You're scared. You're like, oh, shit, watch these guys. They don't have nearly as much weapons training as the guys that I'm used to dealing with. So I'm watching them like a hawk. And this guy, his weapon jams, and what does he do with this gun? Don't tell me he looks down the barrel. He looks down the fucking barrel. Oh, fucking my gosh. gosh. And where's his finger? On Does the trigger. It? On the trigger. He does He does this, no. and he starts going up, and he actually gets the so, barrel. Does someone catch him? It's me. Or? I'm the safety. Okay. So I take both arms, and I drive his arm to the ground and pull away. And, not, and it was not the action of me putting his arms down. That's not what set the gun off. But once I placed his hands on the ground and about a second had passed. He pulled the trigger? He oh. had already pulled the trigger. But oh. that round that didn't go off went off. Shit. So he had a round in the chamber. He had pulled the trigger. And then he looked down the barrel. And if <sighs> if I had not have slapped that. Those are all band names, if, by the way. <laughs> everything you just said. If I hadn't have slapped his hands to the ground, yeah. he just shot himself in so the fucking So it was just head. a. What? Wait, when did that happen? <sighs> was it a cold pin? That's all it was? I don't know. It's, I don't know. I don't even know why, how that would happen. What, because did y'all get I don't beers either. afterwards? That doesn't make Say, sense. No, I wanted Explain to, some I wanted to fuck, fuck him, him up. up. Yeah, because, I mean, oh he gosh. almost did. I mean, I would have never have seen anything that awful, even to this day. I yeah, mean, yeah, that's... man. Fuck. So... <clears throat> it was bad. But yeah, I'm thinking I don't, about that. I don't want to go to a range where you can do whatever the fuck no, you no, want. No, no, no. <laughs> when I say do whatever you want, 
I, I mean, it's it, not like that. It's not yeah. like crazy. People are it still is, really. Everybody is intense. still really controlled. No one's out there drinking or doing. Yeah, there's whatever. no drinking. It's everybody's really. You got to go overseas for those gun ranges. But you can or actually shoot any field in West Texas. Instead of being at like defender, you can shoot in any position you want. Yeah, yeah. You can go prone. You can go. Uh, oh, hey, hang, you hang can lay my, down. Uh, vodka. You're gonna oh, need there you some. Go. Is there not good? I need Fuck some ice. ice. Yeah, one of you guys are gonna have to take me no, home, you're man. Cold. <laughs> but you can shoot at, you know, you can you can lay in the bed of your truck. You can lay and on top of my like, forerunner and shoot. You know, that's yeah. they they allow you to do that. Yeah, and there's, but there's you can do gun drills. You yeah. can do all stuff. But you were in they a have berm. games there. You're in your own berm. They have like competitions. That's a hundred, a hundred fifty feet long. Yeah. Do they have so a burn. vetting process? I know some of ranges like that have like you got to have two people that vouch for you. You gotta no. get sponsored. To be uh, you on have the range. to. When the first time I went out there, I did the tour, mm-hmm. and they showed me everything because they have a, they have a, uh, six hundred foot range. Okay, that's for the snipers, man. Up on it's perched up. Too. No, 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 no. They have a six hundred foot range, and if you can qualify in a tight pattern on that, then you get to go to the fourteen hundred foot range that shoots oh, wow. down a hill into a gully. That's and there are berms the with targets, and one of them will come and spot you. Okay. I've never shot at a range like that. I'd and like if to do you that. get a cluster there, you get their certification to go up there and do yeah. whatever you want, whenever. Yeah. But what we do is we go get we go out there early, usually on a Sunday morning, beat the church crowd out, yeah. and get us one of those dug in berms to where they Not have. Really they sick. usually have a couple of steel targets. We get, we take some paper targets paper targets out there set them up at different increments and then you can do drills if you want you know uh running with your pistol or your rifle and then pulling pistol doing stuff i don't want to be anywhere they near do that guy it's they fun. do uh, no you don't you stand back and too. you watch like they do yeah. uh like tactical games and stuff out there too yeah, yeah they like, and uh, there's a lot of classes that go out there yeah. and um they do like nighttime classes with stuff mm-hmm it's a it's a cool cool joint. Yeah, to go. Seen, you just got to sign a, a waiver saying that sure. you will kill Nazis, and they're like, "Cool, you're in." Or Let's Bill go. Cosby if he shows up on property. You yeah, cannot, you cannot kill Bill Cosby. No, why no, not? No, no, no. He, he, he he did a bunch of shitty things he, to women. He went through the whole legal. So process. you hate women? <laughs> Is that what I said? I don't remember saying that. <laughs> I want to go to this range though. It does sound badass. It is cool. Yeah, well, I need to go down there. But I'm not. If, if I if I see a guy out there trying to pretend he's John Wick with the targets, <laughs> I'm. I'll show I'm you. Out. A, I'll show I'm you a video in a minute. Just but, kidding. Dude. And <laughs> when you go out with us, it's just basically just. Can I hit this target at 150 feet? Yeah. No, I'm down yeah. for that. Yeah. So. With somebody else's guns, because I don't have any anymore. Oh my I gosh. don't have any more either, Mine, so uh, we'll have to, we'll use have all to all go see if we can, we can rent them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll just use all yours. No, uh, we'll Matt. take bow and arrows. <laughs> we'll use... With the suction cup. Right. We'll throw again. rocks. That sounds yeah. good to me, man. Slingshot. These guns you talk, you speak yeah. of. So That's the thing that's scary, though, is the... So visit Fort Worth. Yeah. Visit Fort Worth. That's Thank the thing you that's for scary, though, is you saw that... Right, and that guy's supposed to be trained. That you saw that. Well, right? that, that's the thing. Like, these there are so many people that are not trained. He was a sergeant. When he was, you a, he was a first sergeant, he's top tier NCO. Holy right? shit! Well, and here's the thing. Okay, the, the people get kind of confused by. Okay, well, I know firearms, so I'm never going to have a fucking problem. So no, that's the first yeah, that's person the that thing. gets shot. That was the most like that guy right there was the most likely to have an issue on the range because Always his confidence fear level is up here. Your firearm, but he's a paper pusher. He's not out there running the lanes. Yeah, he's not out there doing target practice. He was just doing it for funsies. He didn't. He had to qualify. Air quotes, mm-hmm. right? That's part of the army system. Like you yeah. have to stay current, but. He didn't have to. And so there's probably plenty of times that he's bypassed his annual training and stuff like Thinking, that. Huh, I don't need it. I'm not dropping any names. That's like sergeant. what I do at work. I bypass all my Yes, jail sergeant. <laughs> and they're like, go climb a pole. And I'm like, climb it completely wrong. <laughs> I, I did it. I was there. I'm yeah. qualified enough to certify myself. Man, that's I hope exactly there's not what a happens. podcast yeah. where there's these open heart surgery, like the surgeons and stuff and brain surgeons. Like, yeah, I mean, I should probably train a little more too, you know? It's like <laughs> uh, open heart surgery. Yeah, it's like I, I fuck up a lot, honestly. If I you mean, only it, knew. I, I know yeah. I fuck I know. Yeah. Well, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but uh, people. 
and firearms scare the shit out of me because there's so many people out there that you know they're oh, kind of egotistical about it. They mm-hmm. they think they know what they're doing, so they stop paying attention to the fundamental basics. Yeah, and I really do not like going to uh, ranges where it's you know open access like that. Right. I'm, See, this is the thing. I this am, is um, this I'm, is a good range that's decent. Yeah. I say you can do anything. You can't. Re- they have marshals that drive by, but you're really allowed to. Yeah, you can practice in any stance or yeah. however way. They've come out and yelled at us a few times because we've had targets where we were walking up on them and we were shooting a little high. Nice. And they were afraid that yeah. our bullets were going over the berm. So right. they were like, set the target a little lower. Yeah. And when you get up on it, get a little lower. Yeah. Um, it's stuff like that. Um, How do they do hot, cold range? Like, whenever you're They going don't. Up? You're in oh, your own what? berm. Yeah. You have your you're, own area. Okay. Yeah, it's like you've so it for the day if you want. You guys. It's just your guys. And girls. And girls. Jeez, but man. it's just your party. Yeah. Quote, unquote, party. And I think the most we've had out there is like, 10, because mm-hmm. we go out there with our buddies in the Methinks. Um, Susie's gone out there with us. Susie! Um, uh, the Spectacle guys in my band have gone out there. Um, it's a great place. Uh, a couple of guys from the people that uh, work Shalom there don't have big, big energy at all either. That's but it's cool. not. And, and they're like you small all, town. Like, what's up, man? When I go out there, I make sure that nice everybody we go ladies. with are cool. You know, they know what the hell's going on, and they're respectful, yeah. and they fear the weapon. And they know that, you know, yeah. when you set it down or whatever, you know, they don't flag anybody. They don't, you know, it's it's a good deal. And we're all pretty, we're super respectful. Um, Marlon does have the policy, though, if uh, you shoot him, he shoots you straight in the dick. Yeah. That's just it. Well, so that puts a lot of fear and, in And I've been with folks on ranges that have invited me out before in the I'll, past. And this is not to, like, turn my nose up or act like I know more than everybody else, but it's just like a personal like safety thing. See, I would if like to I go, go shooting out, with a guy like you. If I go out with somebody that uh, is unsafe with their firearm, that will be the last, last time. time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I will never, I will only invite people that I feel comfortable with and that respect it. Cheers. Cheers. And hey, if, if che- uh, Cheers to you, man. Cheers. If I don't respect Here. or if I don't feel comfortable with you anymore, I won't invite you ever again or you won't we won't be at the range. Now that's time. cowboy. Mm-hmm. That We're up cowboy. to two. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be, you gotta be yeah. cool with it. See, you know what? I, this is funny because I thought about this recently. Uh, I, you guys saw that crazy ass video where that dude that uh, Saint Louis, Saint Louis, yeah. So that I was thinking, disturbing. Have so, you seen it? I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. So uh, this guy and a homeless guy got in a fight at a gas station in Saint Louis. This is the backstory. They got into some argument, tiff. Well, the homeless guy walked away, mm-hmm. but the guy he was arguing with... We need someone to play it. Uh, ...pursued him. And the homeless guy sat down on a curb and was kind of done with everything. Well, there was people videotaping it, everything that happened. The guy, the aggressor, pulls out a gun. He's on his cell phone. And he's leaning his head. He pulls out a gun, and he's having issues cocking it. Yeah. And he's trying to figure it out. And he pops the mag. He looks at it. And he's, you know, he's trying to cycle everything. Right. Finally, he gets it to cycle, and he reaches over, and he just shoots the homeless guy right Fucking there. right, right there. in the head, man. Right there. All on video. So, oh my and they God. went and caught this anyway. kid. Now, this kid is 24 years old that shot the homeless guy cold blood in the middle of the day downtown St. Louis in front of a ton of people. Was yeah. He, okay. Was he drunk? What? I mean, that's so sick. He didn't look like it He thinks video, he's a, a wannabe but... gangster. This guy was 24 and looked like he was 53. Mm, he looked yeah. like he had been through a bunch of crap. He'd probably been on the streets for a good uh, yeah. while. Wow, looks he, horrible. I but... bet he had seen crack before. Like somewhere in his life, he saw a piece of crack. <laughs> At some point. Yeah. <laughs> like it's butthole. in the equation. And a butthole. <laughs> shit like this happens and it's scary. Yeah. Like yeah. A hundred percent scary. So, okay, that brings me to what I was going to say. I started thinking about Texas and I was like, because when you drive around Texas, like I'm starting to feel unsafe because I know every single person on the highway is loaded up and ready to go. But like that's Like good. Frosty, right? I know. That is good. But after seeing that, and we just talked about how you go to the gun range. Sometimes it's a nightmare. Like I, I, I don't 
I'm starting to get scared to go to Shoot Smart and all those type of places, those those uh, retail places that you know what I mean, that are chains. I'm starting to get scared because of some of the stuff I see there. It's just like you were talking. Yeah, Defender. You, you, you is there going really to techniques. be a point that we do say, "All right, Texas," and I'm pro Second Amendment big time, right? I'm not. All right, like Texas, this. you're probably not. Let's uh, think of some kind of something we need to do here to keep these cowboys that think they know what they're doing, th- keeping the guns out of those people's hands. And that could be me. I don't know. But there's just so many. That video of that kid in Plano that ran into the gas station and he just jumps around and, and pops three people, or was it five? He pops Whatever, five, kills many. three. And you see that poor 14 year old die, like trying to get up, just get up. And you watch his whole death. You're like, what the fuck? And he was running well, this around. This is a fun show. Well, <laughs> well this is the thing. It got, <laughs> I'm just saying this is what got me thinking this. Also, that kid, what was scary about him, he was jumping around almost like a jumper in Call of Duty. And yeah, you got to think, man, Texas, like, if this keeps happening, we got to take a look at ourselves. I don't care what side of the argument about the Second Amendment you fall on. Texas is going to have to have some really good conversations pretty soon if this keeps up at this pace. I think, I think you're right about the conversation aspect of it, for sure. Like, we need to figure out what's going on here. I saw yeah. a really good video the other day where somebody nailed it on the fucking head. He was talking about how his father uh, came back from World War II, and at that time there were more Americans that had fought in war in that time period than ever uh, right. since or before. Mm-hmm. And at that time... And it, it, that right there, he's trying to allude to the uh, PTSD factor. And uh, then he goes on to talk about how every truck, every vehicle in the high school parking lot had a mm. rifle rack yeah, in the yeah. back. Yeah. And most of them That's had the loaded Palestine guns in the back. Yeah. I mean, guns were more prevalent in the 60s than they are now, yeah. I mean, which is kind of hard to believe because especially in Texas, most gun owners own a lot of guns. Yeah. Well, so, the other but, thing was back then they were a lot cheaper Yeah, as far as... as what, how much money you made and everything. It, it all equated that guns were a lot cheaper. You could order them out of Sears Roebuck. You could order them yep. out of Montgomery Wards. Now, you know, ARs are expensive. So, but the point is that w- the access was there. The access to weapons was yeah, absolutely and it's there. Wide open. They weren't locked up. They were sitting in every car across yeah, America, and then um, well, they you, just put the know, regulation on automatic fire, like in the nineties, wasn't it? It was but, during uh, Clinton. And and then yeah. you and then you have Clinton, you know man. all these veterans coming back from World War II. They saw horrendous shit. Yeah. So the issue is not and and not to take away from what you're saying because we do need to have a discussion about this. Like it needs to be front of everybody's mind. Yeah. yeah. But access to firearms and any of these. Uh, veterans coming back from war and stuff like those factors don't actually apply but there's something going on Mm -hmm. socially that has to be addressed well there's a there's a mentality and i i hate to throw this under video games because there's been the video game argument that video games don't actually change people but they they do in a way that young kids i think them there's a mentality there that if I shoot you, you're just going to respawn, or it's just you know you can put another quarter yeah, in and play again. The, the, yeah, because their brains jump aren't around and educated jump enough. People. So I think young Drop kids shots. don't value life. So you see all these kids shooting up things. They don't value life. They don't understand life. They don't understand that there is no spawning. <laughs> there is no respawn. If you shoot someone in the head, they're going to die. And, and that's it's got to be. They're yeah. not coming back. They're but not it, it's, yeah. respawning in a different spot. It, it's got to be more encompassing, like a more global image of it, though, because not all these kids are playing those video games. I mean, a lot of them are. I got that, but you could make the same argument for music and all these social uh, Instagram and uh, TikTok videos where people are getting famous off of, uh, you know. Uh, what's the right word for this? But influencers and do, stuff, doing like crazy whatever. shit. Yeah, just yeah, being the, a crazy. The crazier influencer. you are, the more attention you get, the closer you get to fame. And I, I, if I had to put it's my the value if I had to of put, life. Yeah, did if, you see if that? If I had to video? put a pin in anything, it would it would be everybody's uh, desire to be a rock star. The, the, yeah, or the famous, rock star, or, yeah. famous. Person they want their thirteen whatever. seconds, but there's also not. There's a lot, and you can you can throw this over to like the OnlyFans side. There's not a yours, a, with the yeah, feet? mine, yeah. 
uh, there's not a value to life, and there's not a thought. Young people don't think about the future. They don't think about how things will affect them 10 to 20 years from now. I know I didn't. I remember. Yeah, you're there was a time when I was younger. Age. We were reckless. You're we already went reckless crazy. There were so at, many times teens. I should have died. Yeah, yeah. You know, same. growing Bridge up, jumping. doing stupid shit that now I look back, it's like, why the fuck did I ever do that? <laughs> and I think. Chill, you're like, <laughs> yeah. It's because, and the, this is very old, man. It's just these young kids don't know. They don't factor it in, and they're. Uh, you know, there's the whole 25 year old. When once you're 25 years old, your brain finally nah, I don't think comes so, together. Man. I think you get hit and 45. You start thinking, <laughs> yeah, he may be 45. <laughs> you're right. Oh, shit. I mean, it may be even later than this because I mean, yeah. we're still doing a podcast about dick and joke farts, but or yeah, dick and, and fart, fart jokes. <laughs> fart joke with damn and <laughs> dick and fart <laughs> jokes. Dick and joke farts. But what you're saying... But anyway, <laughs> it's it's the thing. It's like and like guns. even OnlyFans. These girls that, that fire up these OnlyFans and are showing just everything and going nuts, they don't think about what they're going to do in their 40s. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're making a shit ton of money. Hopefully, they're holding on to it and, you know, saving it up and not yeah. just blowing through and being like, ah, oh, look, I made this They're not fast-forwarding to where they're sucking dick in the parking but lot. You're, they're not you're doing... Not, no, 40 years from now, when they want to run... That's... Yeah, you're right. <laughs> But when you're um, for when you're in your forties and you decide to run for you know mayor of River Oaks, and they're like, "Well, you have," I mean, I can see you take it in Dustin, every orifice here. Dustin, in uh, we have fans. this video of you. <laughs> you know, some some your campaign's over. Even like some girl wants to be a city council yeah. woman, and, and you're not calling out the the younger crowd. You're saying, "I was there. I experienced that. I remember uh, how I short sighted shit. I was." But, but it's intensified there's no now. documentation of the dumb shit I right. did. Yeah, right. We, the we, dumb shit you guys we, did. We got yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, we, we <laughs> had lucky. a video camera every Very once lucky. in a while, but now it had a 15 minute battery yeah. and about yeah. 30 minutes of yeah. tape. It's sad. But now you have people, you <laughs> know, doing this shit right. like on OnlyFans. You yeah. can pay five dollars to see me. Take whatever in whatever orifice send or whatever. Me, yeah. Send me the yeah. link. Send yeah. me the link. Well, how about this? And then I want to be a city council person now <laughs> how, because how I care <laughs> about my kids because I'm older. Oh, well, we pulled up your old OnlyFans yeah. that's still floating we around. We got this video. Here. We, paid I mean, the, we paid the 99 cents. So, and, not to bring uh, the room down quick, again, though? Hold on, real oh, quick. Oh, God. What real quick. Hold on. Now? Just a second before you bring the room down. One of the things I found out this past, like, uh, it was about two weeks ago, was old porn. Okay. And old porn stars when I was growing up and finding stuff of theirs, like their entire catalog still floating around. Like people have taken stuff that was only on tape and not digitized it. it. They're yeah. not getting paid, probably. They're not getting paid on this, but you're like, I mean, this this was in the you know early 90s, and this poor girl <laughs> probably just wants to be a mom and raise her kids. <laughs> and her kids are like, you know, her kids are surfing the web and come across her name, and they're like, "Holy shit!" My mom was in a you know DP yeah. gangbang <laughs> thing, and it's like, Respect. "What the hell?" Was, would you say DP? I'm, could you repeat that part? Uh, I don't know. The, what was you that? can rewind the tape. Uh, type it into search later, and uh, it'll all will be revealed. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Is <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to bring that it down. It's we'll scary. continue this conversation it's because scary. I because what I got to say is very dark. About this, we, we, we this will be a wrap up, and we'll we, go back no, to Fort no, Worth. We all want to hear it. Well, no, we'll we want to hear it. Fort Visit Worth Fort Worth. Visit Fort Worth. Tell us the dark thing. Everybody so, wants to know. It, the thing that's really crazy and out of control and blows my mind now, especially about the video that we were just talking about about St. Louis, right? Is I can't believe that now people's first reaction when they see some crazy shit hit the fan is pull their phone out. Like, yeah. I remember, like, when I was growing up, if you saw some crazy shit, you busted ass, got the fuck out of there. Like, or you helped, right? Or you helped. Yeah. Or, right. or the <laughs> bad thing is, you're in a spot like St. Louis where their gun laws are crazy, and you can't stop what happened. Right, 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 right. You, right. An, an innocent guy was shot by it, some dude that, that spent, I don't know... 45 seconds to a least. minute and a half yeah, trying to figure trying to out what was gun. wrong with his gun. And nobody's yelling, hey, he's, he's got, got a gun. He's got a fucking gun. And Get away. And it sounds the like there was thing. a bunch of people around the guy that's doing the main video. In Texas, no. one of those people would have been like, okay, I'm stopping this. 
we're yeah. going out on this. No, guy, yeah, it's 100%. a double edged sword. It's a double edged sword. Yeah, it's totally a double edged sword. You know, I'm just saying there has to be a conversation because of what we just talked about. Like the stuff I see when I go to these these uh, chain gun places that are in, in the city, like all over the place now. It's big business. Yeah, right. It's like, it's like Starbucks. Yeah, it's like Starbucks of guns, and you go into a, a, a lane, and as you go to your lane, you see some guy with his kid who's like five years old on the gr- sitting on the ground and playing with the freaking twenty two. <laughs> what? You're like, what the hell is going on? And Did you, you just really kinda look, see I, that? I, 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 I will not say the name, but it was local in, in the city. And I couldn't oh, believe what I was seeing. Man. I just looked at the guy. I'd turn, they, listen, I'd have turned around. I'd have walked right I said, out. I need my money back. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck and it's funny that. because uh, about damn. a year ago. What was the name of the place? Can you tell us that? No. Come on. I, I, you know, no. Because I don't uh, I don't want these fucking crazy. What letters to start with? I don't want these maggers. These what ma- letter does it start these, with? I don't want them like, coming after me. And you, like, you, you son of a bitch. Well, listen, like, you know how many, that kind of do you know life. how many responsible gun owners would l- like to know where the fuck that was so they don't ever go? Yeah, what's the you beginning letter? You know what? I will tell them. I will tell uh, S. Shoot but, smart. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Well, that they've changed names so many times, so well, I can't you want, say yeah, what it I is. I wonder but, why. But, 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 oh, but, by my house? Huh? No, it wasn't by your house. I'm okay. not. Anyway, the th- my, it gets back to what I'm saying though is when you see that a couple times at the gun range, which uh, I, you never really had problems until the last, I would say, what seven years. Like you could go to a gun range in the city and be like feel okay. Yeah. But it's gotten to where you got like kid laying on the floor. You got gangster that's, side shooting. What the? You fuck? got you got guys. Well, that's doing, when you need a marshal. You got, all right. got they all have marshals. That's so, the thing. Though. And the marshals don't care. So yeah. since we're throwing names out there, I and not a sponsor, but every time I've gone to Defender Gun Range, they've been awesome, dude. I've heard nothing but good things. They've about got them. a good lock on those lanes. They're like, just they're, too expensive. They're, I'll pay it, man. How I, much? How it, much? I think it's eighty dollars a month for yeah, lane that. access. That's too much. Well, you know, is there no? <laughs> you have to join. To shoot there? No, you do not. You, but, so how many, you can go do a day thing. Yeah. Well, how much does that cost? Uh, do you know? I think it's 20 bucks for an hour in a lane. It's not a big deal. All right. An hour? Yeah. I hate right. places that charge by an hour, by hours. I don't know. It makes sense. Most but, of them have specials, like if you go date night but, or something. But I'll, I'll tell you this. I've been in one of their lanes before, and I did something stupid. Like I had... And they caught you, They said something to you? Yeah, like I had maybe I had a round hey, in the chamber, and I sat it down, like muzzle out, and uh, one of the guys was like, hey, man... And corrected me, and I was like, "Oh yeah, no problem." I, I but that made me feel good. Like yeah. he's watching. That's going to make you a better uh, gun enthusiast too. I've talked yeah, about it thing. on our show. There's you a need place to be called on your show. There's a place right by the temple that wants to be a sponsor of our show. It's nice too, and they need to hurry up. They're pretty nice, um, but they have called me out on what I've brought in, and they're like, "You need to drop an attachment because you're breaking." You got you know. too much gear on that shit. <laughs> this ain't Call of Duty. It's Mr. not too much hey, gear. Hero. No, it's not too much gear. And I'll, I'll say... Uh, and that's why we haven't done anything with them. <laughs> they're on a... What is considered a pistol. Uh-huh. Having a uh, holographic scope. Okay. A brace. A 30-round mag. And a uh, forward grip. That is too much. Okay. How long's the barrel? Uh, you maxed your attachment three slots. Three and a half inches. It's an MP5K. For you gamers. With a fucking 30 round? <laughs> it's an MP5K. Okay. It's yeah. built. You know, it's built for that. Yeah, yeah. I have, uh, no secret. I own one of these. But <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> having, fun, guys. having the front grip, the guy was like, that's too much. And we have a <laughs> lot of people come in from that are uh, ATF. That shoot with us and they see you with it. You're and they're like, f- we don't care. You can do whatever you want, but if one of those guys roll in, you're going to get in trouble. They're going to come talk to you. And I was like, all right, I'll pull. And I, it is, it's a quick release pin. Boom, 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 done. Yeah. No big deal. And I shot anyway. Got the little quad rails. Uh, it's got a rail on the bottom. You just pop yeah. the pin, pop it out, and you're done. And I was like, that's, I'm totally cool with it. It's fine. Yeah. You know, but they were like, that's, I, I, I honestly didn't know that. On what is considered a pistol, you can only have I didn't three know. Attachments. attachments. Yeah, I had no idea. And that a thirty round mag considered is considered an attachment. Oh, yeah. can I have incendiary? 
rounds. <laughs> Not in any in of those gun places. Range. That's what <laughs> caught the place on fire in Dallas. Well, oh man, that happens all the time, dude. Yeah. And I people I, show up with tracers and they're like, "Look, this is fun." And before the boating accident, I had probably s- the boating between accident between six. I don't know if I've heard that story. Somewhere between six and twelve magazines staggered with tracer ball tracer ball. Tracer, you did too, ball. huh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the way to party, baby. That is the way to party. <laughs> but you can't take that to the range. No, so you can't you, take it to the range. Like, okay, so there's a you, whole group of mags that before yeah. I dropped them in the lake, that right, I was that like, around anymore. I can't use these because they will right. set a place on fire. I got a question for you, though. The So the boating accident you keep referring to, I'm, I've got to assume that you're talking about was you, it the you and Paul and Mur- Paul Murdoch were, were hanging out on a river. I never that, met Paul. That that. Accident. Look it up, kids. <laughs> That's a thing. Anyway, can we get like back to fun stuff? His local dad stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. His dad Jesus. just got convicted for killing him. Let's Thanks get back to fun stuff. local stuff. All right. So I wanted to talk about your bands because I know this is kind of a sore subject right now. But you are. Why, why is it why sore? Is a sore subject? Well, maybe it's not. Shit, my bad. I mean, but one of them might be. That's the one I was saying might be. What? All our bands suck. Is that what you're about to say? Is all our bands suck? That's not what I said. <laughs> How many Nobody bands do you want to know that. about? I want to know about your illustrious career of music. That's oh, what I want to know. So let's start with Stubbs. And uh, do you guys intersect with the music anywhere? Yes, all okay. over the place. Okay. Yeah, and there's some, sh- there's some stuff that he loves that I hate. All right, let's no, go. No, 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 no. Our, our bands we've been in yeah. is what he's talking about. We've been... I've been in some of your bands that I hated. <laughs> and... I've watched some of your bands that I've hated. <laughs> the truth comes out here on the Fort Worth Roots. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Are we, we in a fight? We no, no. Dustin, <laughs> Dustin, and I write music really good together and real quick, and we're very we're good at it. Like yeah. I'm serious. That's we what could, you say honestly, if we wanted to go get a a, a job out in Nashville writing music <laughs> and, or L A, you know, writing just dumb shit, we probably we'd probably make it. Every song would have the c word in it though, and it's kind of weird. <laughs> that doesn't work in country music. No, I would only bust C C words all the time if he was recording live. Right. I was talking about. Yeah, that's yeah. It. I was talking about S E A. No, C. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, you're gonna the be C heartbroken words. when you find out I don't edit these anymore. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what were you thinking? I was talking about the no, British man, C word. No, I was talking about the C. I, you, I don't know. Cigarettes. Our last band was every song was about the ocean. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We, well, we've had a couple of projects that were about oceans. So, in the '90s. God, that sounds so long ago. In the late 90s. Let's make this right. Yeah. In the late 90s, he played in a band called Steadfast. I played in a band called Ex Mobius. Or Mobius. And what's kind of wild... I was working at a radio station, too, which uh, put a lot of us together, too. Um, (laughs) K-E-G-L. What was kind of crazy was that the (laughs) bass player for his band, I grew up with. I grew up with his sister. He was younger. This man is now known today as the puppeteer. Skip Redstone. Oh. Matt Robotuner Thomas was his bass player in his band. Okay. Well, Which we just tried out. Like I think we found him on like yeah. Craigslist or something. I had followed I had gotten contact with Matt in his previous bands, uh, Ten Gallon Stripper and Ten PhD. Gallon stripper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kinda awesome. That's pretty good. And then PhD. His, his band names have always been cool, except the ones that I've been in with him. And we kind of played shows together with those bands. And then he dropped out, or the bands broke up or whatever. But then he joined Steadfast. And then we all got hooked up and we started playing together. And we did a bunch of shows together. A lot of Tarrant all County All over the place. Too, though. Tarrant County, like we Dallas. We did Tarrant County we stuff, stuff during stuff. the week. We'd yeah. just go all over the place and just play each other's friends' bars. And Played stuff a whole place. bunch of shows together. And then um, the night that the... Let's see here. We played a bunch of shows together. The night of the second Iraq War, when it broke out, they were playing Aardvark. I was there. That was going to be like... After 9-11 and stuff like... Yeah, all that. Know. Matt Thomas's last show... So you're saying the initial invasion? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to take Desert Matt Storm. Thomas's place right? no, in Steadfast. Oh. And it was kind of like Steadfast dissolved after that. Y'all played one more show at Broncos, and then y'all dissolved after yeah. that. And that's when Whiskey Dick yeah. started. Fritz and Johnson started. Fritz and Johnson started around. Whiskey Dick. Did you you kind of laid low. Did you do anything with Whiskey Dick? No, I didn't. Okay. Partied. 
<laughs> did a bunch of photo shoots for them. A bunch and of Album art yeah. and stuff. All the coke. <laughs> um, you kind of took it easy. Yeah, yeah. Because I just you got had married daughters and, and, and all that. And was having kids and stuff. Yeah. So. And then. Which put me through. De- not the, having the kids, but I went through a depression because I wasn't making music. And it was pretty long. It was it was over five years. I gotta pee. And um, I didn't. Yeah, I can keep going. I know what he's talking about. (laughs) I think I was there. You were there. But uh, yeah, I I uh, so I was kind of just in a funk for a few years and stuff, and didn't really do any music at all. Few years you went through this. It was like uh, well, it was more than a few. It was probably over five. God damn, dude. And then I just trying to figure out, you know, life and stuff. And 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 it, and what happened? I I even went through some therapy, and the therapist was like, "Well, let's talk about some of the things that had changed with when you were happy and where you're at now, and all this." And as soon as when she when we talked about how I had stopped playing music because I had to get a a, a full time job and, right. and and worry about a, a, a you know providing for a child that. Uh, I just thought that's what naturally you're supposed to do, right? You know, yeah. you, the whole atomic family. Yeah. Like, I'm your basic Gen Xer. Atomic family, all that shit. That's what I thought was supposed to happen. Yeah. And uh, so my therapist said that was the worst thing you could have done, man. And that's why you're going to probably deal with this stuff for, for the rest of your life. Oh, now that you did that. It's kind oh of, God. No, no. He There's no it. way out. But he was, he, no, he didn't say make it that way. He was like, if you want, that's a that's something that you used. You you started doing that when you were 13 years old. You started doing that like on a regular basis, yeah. just growing up. And then all of a sudden, you just quit it. And uh, actually, it was a it was a it was a she, it wasn't a he. But my psychiatrist too told me that uh, a few de- years down the line too. Yeah. I was like, man, why why would you think that quitting music altogether and just focusing on family? Would be healthy move, yeah. It, it's health, yeah. You're uh, as a man and as a parent and stuff, and, and 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 or a woman, like as a parent, you know, yeah, you are supposed to start thinking about things, mm. but you don't give up on your on your uh, your musical fun and and talent and and um, vision. You gotta have an outlet, man, and it's something right. you're passionate. And that's about. the same. That's the same with Dustin. Dustin has been the same way. We've been. There's a group of guys that are our age that are. We're all uh, just like cool dudes, and this is we. We just. It's almost like it's it's uh, softball. Like so, you know how those you know how those assholes get out of, of uh, college and go get a real job, and then they immediately get on some fucking softball team and play every Wednesday night. Yeah, probably you. I did. I was in a softball team. No, nothing to get no shade on the softball, but I'm saying that's what our bands have become in our lives, and that's when it's really become enjoyable for me. Is uh, that like my? We're all like on these different teams, softball teams, but yeah. we're still like on our same team, and we play these tournaments and all this, and that's what bands are to this group of guys, and it's it's really cool and unique, and uh, there's a lot of. Uh, dark stuff that it helps you get out of. Yeah, and podcasting. How far did you get too. into the history of things? Did you? No, no. We it? we rabbit hold on. Uh, oh, you got personal, done a rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Journey. Sorry, sorry. So it's good stuff. Yeah. So back <laughs> to the history of how things went. Like when Steadfast fell apart, Jesse, their drummer, came and joined Exmobius, the band I was in, um, because we had drummer issues. Yeah. And uh, we recorded. We we played a lot of shows. wasn't a great band, but we did a lot of shows. Um, had a lot of fun um, doing it, but it was a good learning experience about a lot of things. And um, but in the music, Jesse when he came in, like it seeing changed. him play, it, night, got, it was night and day. It was night and day. He was a Jesse is a fantastic drummer. Okay, and great. So and before we go any further, whose instruments are we playing here? Are you both? Basses? I've always I played bass, keyboard, but mainly bass, <clears throat> a guitar, vocals. Vocals. In his band. In yeah, Steadfast. I played bass in a Christian band for a minute. I've never played drums in a band, and that's something I've always wanted to do. Do you drum? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not good, but it's not something that <laughs> yeah. I've, I've never bought a drum set or anything, yeah. but the, I've always I wanted to do I've never done it. But, but uh, and then, Sequence to him. Yeah, I've done drums. vocals, too. And uh, Stink Flamingo, though, right now, what we're working on. Well, wait, wait we're going to get that. Oh, we're okay, my that. bad. So, <laughs> Jesse joined... Uh, Ex Mobius, and we played a bunch of shows, did a whole bunch of stuff, and then that kind of fizzled out uh, because I'm going to blame it all on World of Warcraft. 
everybody started playing World of Warcraft, and it kind of what year is, is this? that code for our <laughs> frack? No, I don't know, two thousand three, two thousand four, something like that. That's but uh, that's when everybody like we all started playing when it was released, and mm. our practices turned into just playing War- Warcraft together on our laptops. So I got into room. that. Um, in probably 2009. I never did, and I had to sing vocals, which, which <laughs> yeah. is about to, so you're about to find out. <laughs> that band broke apart, but me and Jesse kept in contact. We kept talking. We kept wanting to do stuff, and an old guitarist from my past reached out about starting a band, so we started this like half-ass acoustic college rock band. Yeah, very... And in the, very in the off time, rock. I was playing in jazz bands. I was doing all sorts of weird... Stuff a fish style band. I hate fish. Ween. We'll say ween, not, yeah, not ween fish. style band. But <laughs> ween. it was all these. Which I need to talk to you about them. Um, Are we in? Do you want to go? Yeah, f- Absolutely. Okay. You that- four times. You because there were fuck. That's a good point. <laughs> it was either you or <laughs> yeah. It was either no, you I'm or in. Susie. So I'm in. yeah, you're. Yeah, right. I'd love okay. to see ween. So um, anyway. W- w- Jesse came over to me to this to Audioscopic, which was the very chilled out, half acoustic, half electric, you know, fun band. Yeah. Um, college rock, chick rock. Um, that was really fun. And then uh, the guitarist fell out, and this guy starts reaching out to Jesse about wanting to do some stuff again. I was like, "Well, come in and fill in with the Audioscopic." This when you met? Matt? Well, we all we no, I think I knew it Matt was we uh, we all came Matt. we we started talking at a whiskey dick show. Is what happened. <laughs> Okay, that's where it was. We and then it was kind of like um, Fritz. The main guy that put together Audioscopic had a relapse. Who? And it got bad. Yeah. And it, we had to sit down with him and be like, all right, this ain't going on anymore. And that just dissolved that band. Yeah. And the, yeah, the, I guess the Whiskey Dick show, him, Jesse, his old drummer, my current drummer, were like, let's. Get something but, going. Let's do. Uh, let's do a three piece. It was a long breakup. We though. It was a long breakup though because you Wait. remember you did a uh, you you, you we going? did a thing with him. Yeah. And oh yeah. And both of I, you and I had a conversation about one jam in or two jams in. It was like, uh, dude, he's he's fucked up, man. He needs to go take care of himself. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's, that's this is not going to end of well. It, because like, that's when it started being like, this guy's on heroin. And it was really, really fun. I remember the music that y'all had wrote was really fun to play, and I was enjoying myself, but it was an obvious problem when a guy just kind of sits in a corner and, and for a whole jam and doesn't even participate. I was like, it's uh, really difficult to take care of himself. <laughs> it's really difficult when you have a friend that you grew up with. You see him go through a bunch of shit. When in his in his <clears throat> late very teens, early twenties, are you talking artistic. specifically about the heroin use? Or no, hold on, we're getting to that. Okay. Relax. Okay. There's stages we got to go through. This <laughs> it's not just straight to heroin. Okay, this would if, if, there, was a, if there was me, a Netflix so. series about the Jerry Jonestown Massacre podcast show, it's, it's it would be multiple wild. seasons. It would not just be. I think we're covering it all tonight. But it, it might be. <laughs> but he, I saw him go through stuff. I saw him get in trouble with the law and have to deal with that. And this was a good an issue, friend of yours. A good friend. He, he had a relative that was involved in a fucking terrible, terrible case up in the Northeast. Murder yeah, case. That is actually an HBO special. See? Um, there's multiple layers of this yeah, thing, there's, man. He had a uncle that was... Uh, there's an entire HBO special We haven't even gotten into uncle. Dustin's black dad. We haven't even... Hadn't yet. even come up yet. So then he went through everything, cleaned up, and reached out about doing music stuff and we did we created cool stuff and he was clean and about good. seven or eight shows in we're at a show and he starts drinking a lone star and i'm like what the fuck you doing you're straight edge what the fuck's going on all of us oh my what are you gosh. doing what are you he's like it's just one beer i just need it because we've been working and it's stress and blah 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 yeah bitch but and we're been so- point, how long have you been like, sober at that point i i a long time it's he's like it's just one beer won't lead to anything yeah. Oh, and yeah, right. a week later it was weed, and then like three weeks later it was oxy, and then it was heroin, and it was just it was that fast, and it sucked. It really, really sucked because the guy's super talented. He's 
uh, super creative. He released an album today. <laughs> oh, nice. He was <laughs> doing everything. Rap. He's still around. Yeah, I know he was doing rap. He's still Hip-hop around. He minute. cleaned himself back up. He's got himself on the straight and narrow. Too, He's gone through a lot. He's an amazing, badass tattoo artist yeah, he, over in yeah. Dallas. He's just a great artist, a period. fucking good dude. Yeah, he's always been a good artist. He would do flyers and shit, and his yeah. art was phenomenal. Um, still a great dude. Released an album today, uh, a hip-hop style album. It's kind of like a, it's a weird... And can we, can and he's dead. Shout it out, huh? He's Ted. No, and he's dead. <laughs> he didn't. Really, no, <laughs> Dustin. He did release an album today, <laughs> and I, if I can it's find Ted. it by the end of the show, no, I'll find it. But I listened Ted's to dead. a couple of tracks. I was like, this is actually pretty damn good. Yeah, and and it's. So are you guys still bros? Rap. Are y'all still talking? We still talk here and there. I think I'm just social media guy. I was. I came in on the tail end of that project, yeah. though. I didn't really know. I'm him. gonna be honest with you. I mean. <laughs> Having going through this twice, it's kind of an arm reach thing. Yeah. And it's it's all in me because I don't want to go through this. I grew up with a guy. I love the guy. He's a cool dude. Yeah. And I just don't want to have to fall down another fucking rabbit hole of this happening again and Dustin dealing has with a it because of it's that shit too, man. Like I mean, Dustin I has a went bad through a habit. Full shit. He has a bad habit of letting bad people into his life and take advantage of his good heart. That's happened to him. You know who else does that? It's Johnson. Johnson does the same shit, man. You fucking. Uh, I just. He's got a. Dustin has probably one of the biggest hearts I've ever met in my whole life. Well, thank you, sir. But now I'm gonna cry. He's got kicked in the nuts over and over and over again, and just by people that supposedly loved him and stuff, and just fucking completely took advantage of. It's difficult it's like, dealing with that, like uh, a whole another story, a whole another time. But like, uh, he's gonna my be, best friend, I, he's gonna be like, damn, I'm it's one of him. It's my him. my best friend I grew up with, <laughs> like, just fucking ran me through a meat grinder, man. It was bad. Like, like it went from happy fun time to the absolute worst shit you can ever think of in your life like happening like st louis guy on the street Mm -hmm. you know shooting someone how do you how do you get through experiences like that and not come out on the other end completely fucking jaded because i deal with a strong person man i think it it takes a strong person you got to be grounded and some something's got to be a survivor in you i think i think i just don't know how to measure it i think no matter what um you know that I am jaded. You have to be, right? I, I'm a hundred percent jaded. I'm a hundred percent jaded, but I can also see in people that the people that are in my inner, inner circle, I can, I can see everyone has their flaws and everyone yeah, has their issues, but sure. I can get past that shit. I can get. I I just don't know. You you find the good in people. You yeah. know you know the good stuff, and you you hang out with someone long. I hang out with Matt long enough. I know his ups and downs and ins and outs. We've been <laughs> we've we've shoved each other around. We've I've been got the at asshole disease. I tell him, hey, tell those people to shut the f- like get the <laughs> like, fuck out of your house. <laughs> like yeah. tell them to fuck off. We've been up and out. Like, I just can't, man. I gotta talk. His advice. I mean, you take it. You know. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I give you gotta, really you bad. Got to view it through but, the Matt Stubbs filter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's one of those things. It's on like, Instagram. Yeah. Through. <laughs> I, I've come to the point in my life reaching this age is that no matter she's some you know Matt's my brother yeah and definitely brothers we're gonna come to points to where we're heated with each other we're angry with each other but it's never gonna change my thought or aspect about him I'm not gonna hate him for it we're gonna come to issues with that we're gonna have times where we're having fun and we're arms in arms and we're cheering the world on and then there's gonna be times where you know we're both pissed at each other, but it's breaking guitars over each other's heads and stuff. <laughs> that's not going to change my it's, aspect of yeah. him. Like we could get in a fist fight and then call each other the next day and be like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" You know, whatever. How you it's feeling? not going to change my aspect. <laughs> what changes my aspect is if you're doing something, and I don't give a shit what you do, but if you're doing something that is causing damage or hurting our relationship, that's an issue. That's when you got to cut them off, man. If you were doing something like heroin and you're stealing shit from me in order to support your habit, that's an issue. If you are doing a drug 
or you're you have done drugs that have made you short circuit and you don't value our friendship and you start threatening my family or you start saying bullshit on social media that you're <laughs> going to kill my family yeah, and we've make me watch threats. we've gotten death threats man you're gone yeah but i mean not on my that's side. That's uh, <laughs> you know, that's a that's a pretty fair line, I'd say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. the yeah. thing is, like, that's the thing, though, about that. Uh, I think that's why we uh, are good friends and stuff, is because he's that type of guy, though. That, like, uh, I, another good friend that we've recently got reacquainted with, I just said a while ago, is Johnson. He has the same thing. That's how I got introduced to Dustin and uh, doing deciding together we're going to write music together because after that whole thing went out with that guy that was nodding off we did I was in jam we did I was once eaten and that was probably the most successful band and it's very, I've been it's, in it was exper- it was freeing it was it very free. A free band like yeah. one of us would just have some crazy ass idea I'm like fuck it let's do it and we jammed and we did some stuff and that it was, was fun. it was fun uh, we played a lot did a lot of, I mean, we we won awards with it, which mm. is silly, but um, or well deserved. I don't know. Awards are always silly to me. <laughs> but it's it was that band was a lot a lot of fun because we were doing stuff the way we wanted to do it, yeah, and how we felt at yeah. the time. Not what was cool, and we Fort weren't Earth. like. Uh, this needs to be a four-minute song, and we need, we need to, to like hit. Pantera. We need to have words come in within twenty seconds. We need to have this net. So no. you're just grateful, deading it out. We no, got to do a dime bag Daryl dive bomb. <laughs> <laughs> the the thing we were listening to at the time was Mastodon's "Crack the Sky," so a lot of the stuff felt along that it would fit. We right got considered progressive in that album. We got considered, yeah, yeah, yeah. He it was a fell fun out. Band, great band. And since then, that's when we started it, the podcast. The podcast started about a year after he fell out, and the podcast was Matt kept saying, "We need to do podcasts. We need a podcast. These things are taking off. We need to do podcasts. We need a podcast. People are talking about shit. shit. We're We're not doing anything. We're just and the studio in my backyard actually said, "What the fuck is going? Is this guy going to kill us?" (laughs) Sorry, I should have warned you. Should I have shot this guy? I I thought I was like, "Man, this this is bad." I was like, "This is really bad." But then I saw he had a Mac. And I was like, oh, we're oh, okay, we're, we're good. good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Oh, no, it's an HP. Oh, no, we need to shoot him. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Actually, I, I take it back. Everything I just said. <laughs> Drinks in the fridge, brother. Oh, great. Thanks, nice. Man. So, pull up a chair. We, um, we started the podcast. You know, Matt kept saying it. I went out of town uh, for a 4th of July party up in Amarillo, up at Lake Tanglewood. Okay. The only pretty place in in Amarillo, Amarillo the yeah. only cool, pretty place that you're only, actually like. I've only driven through the places. Man, I'm not. It's a wild environment. It's the lake that feeds into Paladuro. So if you think of the landscape, yeah. but with water and a lot of half dressed females on it, okay. having fun in the summer. A lot of oil filled July. guys Let's coming go. in and doing Let's a go. lot of and acid. Oh, it, what? It, it's a beautiful lake. It's it's know. real. I'll that area is really really there. cool. Got to go overseas for that. And it's I don't think it, man. I don't really count in San Marillo, but whatever. We're outside. But it was fun, and I drove back, and I was listening to uh, a Kevin Smith podcast, and like I always did, I've listened to him since the beginning. Been a huge Kevin Smith fan for years, but he was talking about how easy it is just grab a computer, grab some microphones, plug them in. And speak your mind. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Smoke a That's joint, get a drink, and speak and your mind. Speak your mind, have some fun, yeah. document it, release it. If people listen to it, they'll listen to it. If not, whatever. Yeah. We're and stuck in that rut since that then. Was on the, <laughs> that was on the drive back, and that night when I got into town, empty my truck, empty luggage, went up to TXB, which was our water and hole, Hillman. I thought you texted me and said, hey, I think, yeah, I might be no. into this podcast thing. No, I came up to TXB, and that's <laughs> said, where we no, sat right. down. <laughs> Let's All, do it you and Seth were up there, and I was that, like, hey. That's not when, no, no. When, now, at what point did you come like, up with Let's the do name it. for the show? So the name of the show, he came up with years ago. Do you remember and This is when, a Matt thing? Yeah. You remember nice. in well, Valley it a, Ranch? It was him, too. In like, Valley Ranch. Where's okay. Valley Ranch? I might have said it. Where the Cowboys used to practice. Okay. They used to have a bubble. Okay. One of those big inflatable bubbles like some teams do. Yeah. A storm came through and took down the bubble and caused all sorts of chaos. People got crushed in it. 
players got hurt, coaches oh, got hurt. One of them got paralyzed. One got paralyzed. Yeah. Holy shit! And one had to learn to walk, or it might have been the same. I cat. think the same guy yeah. had to learn to walk, and again. he walked like that on the like he was a punt, like a special teams coach, and he'd just be but, like, oh "Look like God." It was complete like hardcore. Chaos. I'm over at my brother in law's house playing Left for Dead. Well, tell we also were having an idea about a band. Yeah, we were having an idea about a band. That well, he gonna... texts me and goes, "Have you seen what's gone out in Valley Ranch?" Yeah. I'm like, "No." And he responds, he goes, "It's a Jerry Jonestown massacre over there." <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "Yeah. No. What That's the fuck?" It. <laughs> yeah. No. I was at That's probably high. <laughs> my my brother and my brother-in-law and sister's house playing Left for Dead in a little LAN party with our Xboxes. And I grabbed the laptop. That's Go, it. Daddy. Dun, 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 dun. I'm buying this domain <laughs> Register. right now. Like anybody's going to steal it or anybody know what it is. But I was like, think of it. I need it right now. <laughs> Sat on that domain name for two or three years. Oh, no shit. And then when we were talking about the <laughs> podcast, I was like, you know, I still have the Jerry Jonestown Massacre. We need to do something with it. So, wait, did, did, did you, <laughs> when you bought the domain name, did you know that you were going to use that for the podcast? For a band. Yeah, we wanted to do a beat. band. <laughs> It's going to be a blast beat uh, country, country band. blast beat metal band. <laughs> yeah, like it played like real deal country that you would have like like Randy Rogers type yeah. stuff, like Red Dirt and just good country music, right? Oh, my God. Not the douchey, sudden, be, not the Nashville stuff. <laughs> not that rock star stuff, but you know, <laughs> like, so just, I hope the people listening know what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> it was it, it was going to be wild. It would have been terrible. To try to, yeah. it absolutely yeah. would have been dreadful. <laughs> it makes sense in my mind. It never would have translated well. Oh, we never. couldn't talk a drummer into it. No. Everyone we talked to to jam in that band was like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no I'm not no, going to do yeah. that. When you're doing a swing four four and then have to go to blast beats, they're like, you're no, just trying to piss people work. off at that point. You know, <laughs> yeah. you're trying to get a gig at a country place and then uh, fucking oh play blast beats, or you're trying to get a gig at a metal place trying to play country. But the thing is about the metal place, they'll be cool with it. So I want to, <laughs> I want to back up here. Our band previous to this was called I Was Once Eaten, which is another genius name that this guy came up with because we were at Hooters one night, him, well, Jesse, and I. One band with a girl. And he was trying to remember singer, um, the band I Wrestled a Bear yeah. Once. And he came we up. We just saw them, too. We just we, saw like, them. And he's like, man, it's like that band, you know, the girls in it. And it's like, uh, I was once eaten. The place. And I was like, I ate a bear. That's not them, but I want that name. <laughs> and I want to spell it E Y E. Yeah. <laughs> so I went and purchased everything for it. Nice. Yeah. And got it going. So that's where I was once eaten came from. So both names, I was eating Jerry Joseph Massacre. <laughs> Genius of him. brain farts by me. Just like beautiful. Yeah. Throwing brain stuff farts. out there. <laughs> so. I'm a Tourette's idealist. We bought, I bought that. So Church on Time Master. We held on <laughs> to it. Like, man, that sound like yeah. a fucking two-year-old. But yeah, let's but buy I got it. it. I got it wrote down. And here's some chicken nuggies. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm like, bang my dick on a dumpster. I, we're not going to use that one, but that's going to be a great thing to put on a song. Huh? Hey. Yeah, there you go. So our studio Is set, that a song? It, might have Maybe. That been a true event, Could actually. Have been. Have, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It kind of was. I remember. I think that was year two of the podcast. <laughs> After one of the I Was Once Eaten shows. No, that I was wasn't. just... That was Mio was just and a Sunday Vodka at the park. and TXB. Oh, yeah. I was, There's video of us doing I, karaoke I was probably, that night. I was probably uh, f- uh, mourning the loss of something. Yeah. I'm sure. So, <laughs> the studio sat empty for a year got cold we went in there and set it up as a podcast studio it's nowhere near the way it looks it right totally now took it you're over. talking about the temple the yeah. temple and nowhere it looks there was dust like i went and in wasp. there every once in a while to grab gear lots of yellow jackets. shit here and there but it was <laughs> lots of red wasp shit had taken it over lots of spiders. cleaned it out cleaned what, everything what, off and what's started above the up. ceiling because it's tall gear oh it, it, bunch it, of gears there's access of, there's a ton of touring gear there's a swing on one side and then there's a bunch of Star Wars collectibles on the other side. A bunch of fish hooks, leather <laughs> How straps. How do you get up there? There's no access inside, right? There's a stairwell. Okay. Yeah. So right as you walk in the door, there's a stairway up there. Oh, I never saw yeah. that. That's cool. So, like, all our former tour gears on one side, keyboard, stands, all sorts of stuff. And the other side, Star Wars Like, stuff. honestly, we could probably have a Jerry Jonestown Massacre garage sale and make some decent money. Yeah. So, then the podcast started. Just too lazy to and do And it started it. as three, went to four. 
went back down the three or went back down the three then went just the two of us yeah yeah how do you feel about that uh i think it's better. way better now <laughs> <laughs> when it was three of us is a little crazy um but no disrespect to the third yeah we had fun with all every all our thirds. yeah when it was four yeah, every great everybody that's coming our buddy will show, we loved it uh will would did a lot of producer stuff for us where we didn't have to worry about it he didn't give a damn and he did not give man a damn. he'd do whatever you told Meaning, him to. yeah like that just walk into oh, anywhere javier and do on stuff. like javier um, time he was like your hobby gra- yeah. yes basically <laughs> he would just go 10. grab people and yeah. do stuff he, he was he gave great zero fucks man he was fantastic and then um dustin fired him i didn't fire him he wanted Watch to back your away. mouth matt he it was the same thing he started a family and stuff and, and i always hire and let him fire <laughs> he was worried about his career yeah and which makes sense he wanted to make his way up to the management of the company i worked for during the day well you know if he ever and it makes sense hopefully he doesn't get exposed with his only fans or the porn he did back in the hopefully days. his name's not on the list that went to the, the island problem is he looks like uh what's his name Oh yeah, Bradley Cooper. Exactly. Just like match him. and we would go to bars and people would be like, Are are y'all friends with Bradley Cooper? Yeah. He's like a, like, <laughs> a shorter version of Bradley Cooper. They're like, is that all our girl my, the- my girlfriend's like, Oh my gosh. Like, We'd go all, places. You see the, like yeah. she would talk to her friends in front of me about how this, this guy hot. that hangs out with her boyfriend oh, is yeah. hot and looks just like Bradley Cooper. And I'm like well, okay, I guess, yeah, that's Will. Yeah, Dude, he's cool. It's like, we'd walk into places down. and people, like the place would go silent. Yeah. Because they would just be like, <laughs> what was that thing? Those the, two the assholes just walked he, in with Bradley Cooper. <laughs> he had a habit of showing up to things that we went to in a, what was it, Clifford? Yeah, or Clifford uh, costume. Some dog outfit. That was a bet, though. He had to pay no, that No, he off. did it again, though, didn't he? Yeah, he did He did, did it, it a few times. We were at the Texas Beer Fest. He, he Big met, Texas he, this Beer This is when uh, he met the dude that uh, uh, brought Revolver, like invented Revolver, the brewer dude. And he seemed cool and stuff. I think I was lit, though. That that was the uh, where I lost my phone to a homeless person, a homeless pirate gang what? that stole my train. phone. And I missed the they killers. The I missed the there. killers. And yeah. I missed the killers. I did the responsible thing and had less fun. I don't like that. No, it was a bad story. So, anyway, <laughs> I don't know where Will was fantastic and yeah, totally understand awesome. why he walked away. You know, gave him hell. Um, and we'll get into that here in a minute because that's all. Y'all my are fault. still good though. Yeah, no, no, we're still good. We still. I think we're good. I, with I text with shit with him all the time. Uh, Seth was our third that we started the show with. Um, he actually met his girlfriend slash wife slash whatever the fuck they are these days um, <laughs> through the show. My sister in New Life York, partner, I think. My sister in New York said. was working with a young lady, and uh, she asked my sister, "Like, oh, man, I'm I'm getting into podcasts. What should I listen to?" My sister goes, "Well, my brother has a dumb one from Texas." <laughs> she started listening. She started listening to it. <laughs> fell in love with Seth. Moved down here. Now they're together. Yeah, and y'all, living together and whatever. Y- y'all are not good. No, we are. No, we're good. Yeah, we're good by the way you. Presented that information. No, it's just no, no, people no. come, He's people go. Yeah, like, people come, people yeah, go, and like, that's cool. I mean, <laughs> it's been this way. <laughs> We're know? the only idiots that have kept doing this for this long. Yeah, and we don't really we don't understand blame why, anyone. But I love that you guys have done this. And so the Jerry Jonestown massacre is a pinnacle of the podcast community here in Fort Worth. So you, it's funny that it's that way, man. Yeah, <laughs> we've had two <laughs> others. Very funny. <laughs> I can't go on about the history of Jerry Jonestown massacre without mentioning. We had uh, Susie Ramone for a while, right Susie off the bat. Ramone! Uh, second year, she came in. She helped us out. I pissed her off. Uh, back into, you know, this is the easy I way to I still piss it. her off. <laughs> <laughs> back into Matt saying that I piss everybody off. Um, I pissed her off, and there's a reason. We'll get to that. And then um, Shauna, my, sister, my current sister-in-law, but- she helped us out for a little bit. And, yeah. and fell out. And then she was we awesome, had, too. She got us some cool stuff. Yeah. We had a third. Jesse sat in with us for a little bit. For kind of uh, three months or something. Yeah, it was kind of Well, we weird. got the OGs right here. So yeah, it's, the OGs. it's been all over the place. And I, going back to that with with Susie and even with Will. Um, you double fist vape? That's bold, man. You, like, want a little, little mint on one side, a little... 
cherry wood on one side or something? I what was going to get what sentimental, you but no, you guys that, just that, that, cut me off. That, oh, sorry. Well, well, that, 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 that was Matt. Um, we were going to get the sentimental part of the show. Sorry. But, um, it, it, that one died. This one's not dead. Oh, okay. You just get it ref- I'm yeah, sorry, man. Oh, so you are double fisting. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, please continue. I don't know. I was going to be sweet, but I don't remember. No. Well, we got this Chuck Norris tape. <laughs> Stop um, it, Matt. <laughs> God damn it. I... Uh, <laughs> At the start of the podcast, I was I was I was a Nazi. I'll, I'll just straight out say <laughs> I was going to kill him. I I was pretty hardcore about the way the show needed to be promoted, needed to be done. We needed to have this happen. We needed to have these actions happen. These people needed bad. to be on on certain times. It was pretty what bad. Hitler. So, well, you you were I was to... pretty professional about yeah, it, and I yeah. cared a whole lot about it. And yeah, over the years, hard. it was pretty hard. Like yeah. I, there were times I would. We would in the show, everybody go home, and I'd be fucking yeah. And I had a, I had a little bit of background. It was not like it this was, is not what yeah. I want this to be. This think, is not what it should be. This will never help us out. I think some of it though was me too because I had this background in radio because that's what I got my degree in, and I actually worked in it for a little bit. And so I would always be thinking of things when we first started in a in a mentality of radio. Yeah, what makes people listen? We need to have a music bed. There has to be some kind of music underneath. Otherwise, people, people get bored hated and that. fucking bounce. Our early shows t- we did. And he would tell me, no, nah, man, like we even did a, a, a survey or something. He's like, man, people don't like that and stuff. It doesn't feel like a conversation. And they're like, fuck you. I'm like, no, fuck you. He's like, I'm talking about podcasts. I'm like, I'm, and we just get in fights and stuff. And then, like, uh, I don't know, I, after you do it for a certain point, you just start Loosening up, I think. You like really opposition. start feeling it, and you, yeah, you really start, f- start understanding what people like. And you understand that... You stop giving a shit. The well, people that like you, you are going to stick around, and the people it's, that like you will tell other people, and they'll come around. And, and can I just say, the feedback that you guys gave me about the way I over-process my episodes... Me? I thought it's. I like. I like it when podcasts do production. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I, I love I, it, man. I, I, no, 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 no. I'm so tempted to press some stuff do here it. and like go ahead, do first start. one. No. There you go. <laughs> all right, that's enough. That's enough. what I talked to you about <laughs> was taking out all the gaps of air so it doesn't feel Dead natural. Air. Yeah. But you got to make it feel natural. You can't make it sound like you're on cocaine and you're just sure, constantly sure. talking. But I, I took that and yeah. I immediately implemented it. So make I, it more I, of a conversation. I, I you can really make it feel realistic. That. And, yeah. and like what you're talking about right now is just, you know, it's not radio. It's not. It is a different be beast. It's more casual. It's yeah. more relaxed. And well, we certainly got casual this time. What I finally, <laughs> what I finally learned, and You'll I did, find out. <laughs> I did. Susie and I did a thing at TCJC a couple of years ago. That was about podcasting. I think it's called TCC now. Or TCC. TCJC went away in like 1998, okay. I think. <laughs> the TCC Northeast Campus up here by uh, Marine Creek Lake. Right. We did a podcasting seminar class one day. and When was this? Uh, it was before COVID. So. Damn. So we sat down and we talked to a bunch of people. A bunch of people sat in there and they wanted to learn. And, and the biggest thing I told them was just... Relax. Don't yeah. care. <laughs> have fun. Like, enjoy have what drop. Enjoy relax. what you're doing. There's just no one. Oh. Yeah, I said, relax your anus. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just you've got to sit back and enjoy it and do do you. Yeah. Don't try to be something you're not. Don't try to program this for radio. You're not radio. Yeah. We've been reached out to to go do different things. Um, the thing, the main radio, thing, satellite radio, yeah. all this stuff, and it's like once people find out you do a podcast too, format. everybody yeah. starts putting their two cents in. And but man, you know what I think would be a yeah. good idea in a show and stuff. You're gonna have that the whole time you do it. Sure, There's always sure. man. I was thinking about your podcast, your little show, and, and, stuff, and, and, and for me, I immediately yeah, oh okay, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you, whenever you, be you guys say something about it, I go okay. Uh, we're full of shit too, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> but. Like serious the Godfathers. X- nah, man, serious no, 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 X film reached out to guys us. down in Austin as the Godfather. Nah, yeah, yeah. Was, serious X film reached out to oh, us. Okay. Oh, they <laughs> wanting to talk because I said Siri. Godfather heard us, and he's the Podfather, by the way. Not the they're like oh, you can do sorry, your show. Yeah, right. You know, you can do your. Sh- y'all have a studio set up. You're all good. Everything sounds great. Blah blah blah. You know, we'd love to have your show on one of these channels. Blah blah blah. 
But you got to go hunt down all your own advertising. Yeah. Out. <laughs> Out. <laughs> I don't have the time, resources. Neither one of us have the time or resources to go do this. Yeah. And to reach out to it's national people. I'd have to that's up my pain, Adderall but... dosage for that, man. Yeah. <laughs> Like we would have to have. That's the thing. Is like right now. I th- I like it where we are. I like yeah, it that it's the two of us. I like it that Susie helps us out with things, uh, with booking and stuff right now. I like that. I don't want a fucking team trying to work on something and having to worry about. You know, is this guy getting taken care of? Is he enjoying what's going on? Is he getting paid? Blah blah blah. You're talking about advertisers. Well, if we had an entire team I would like that to was have a team <laughs> that is full st- of advertisers, full of camera guys, whatever. Yeah, I need a team, man. I like this idea. I think this sounds really cool. You want a team for other things? <laughs> just to I keep, want some party bros. You want them to keep track of your life, right? Normally. Right, right, right. Like you, just keep you, track of my life. You want and, your own personal and assistant. Let me look at your butthole at some point. Wait, huh? I don't think that can work in this day and age. <laughs> That's very Epstein esque, or uh, what's his name? I, is there another one? No, the guy that got in trouble that started the whole Me Too movement. What was his name? Man, I don't. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that cat out in L.A. The uh, the Jewish that? dude. Yeah, right. Wasn't he? Weinstein. 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 Yeah. Yeah, 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 Weinstein. No, that like I can say that I could say there was a a, a lot of Jewish money out in L.A. Because everybody you can't knows that. Ask someone that works for you to look at their butthole. Oh yeah, well that was a joke. Okay, of course I would never like, ask you that. Can't just. Say There's that. no way I would get drunk and party and do you know crazy things all night and then ask my staff to do something that crazy. I would never do that. Look at the shit you've said on this show that's supposed you, to be clean. This is, I, I thought this was a, the late night version of the Fort Worth Roots podcast. Fort Worth Roots after you dark. You told me it was after dark. And I mean, and, it's and dark now outside. Here, it's a Friday night. It's a Friday night. It's I dark this outside. Was the, what do you say? The we're going out to the ocean. I mean, and, and Andrew just episode. keeps us feeding us vodka from the skull. Yeah, you got to give me a I'm warning. Tell me what's in that. We'll just blame it all on him. Why did, keep, he, did he just leave and quit? On. He got scared. He's like, "Fuck this! I'm leaving." And he just left. So now we're in charge. Yeah. All right. That's his worst mistake because I'm about to play some stuff. So Ukraine. <laughs> Let's talk about abortion. <laughs> Let's talk about nuclear war. <laughs> Let's talk about the impending nuclear holocaust. Let's talk about that. Um, I need to find Ted's album real quick that he put out. Yeah, I'd like um, to hear it because I heard some of his rap and it was really good. Mm-hmm. It, did we really jack his show? Is he done? I don't know what he did. I think he went to vomit. I think He's we like, dude, you've said the C word seven times. Does he bleep him? Does he bleep the when you say it? Hey, do you bleep the C word? Like the cuss words? I think you should on this one. I just, I've always wanted to hear I'm, myself. I'm gonna s- make and then some, fucking, it'd be bleep, bleep, like. I'm going to have to make some uh, adjustments. Well, I'm going to have to make some decisions. Like, well, I, I, say, I, <laughs> like, I think, I think, oh, like, shit. No, this ain't going right, to be right, released till fall. <laughs> he can play it, the whole thing. I just think you need the bleeps. Just bleep it. Just bleep it. And, and yeah. release the whole thing. Sorry, I had to funny. run out of the room. I about died, but I, need, I, uh, I felt myself blacking out from the bladder expanding. I've never experienced that before. Yeah, you know, we were talking about uh, Cliff Huxtable over here, right? Okay. And stuff. So it's that's right. what Dustin Whoa. did to you. Even you the, were looking the other the TV way. Was the up. TV's like, it's time <laughs> to close up. it out. Well, shit. What? We got to go. Why? Because I just want to get off the mic We're and just, just getting hang started, out. Man. You don't, do you have any other questions for us? I mean, this you have us in your realm. I know. We'll come back, though, and answer some more, man. We, we won't just leave it at this. We got. Well, I think next time we're going to have to put a ball gag in Stubbs. So you can put a ball gag in a, some show notes and say, "Okay, we're sticking in this area." <laughs> it wouldn't have worked. Now that we're, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. Now the show notes. <laughs> we're at the end of the show. Basically, is I want you to know where are your drugs? How fortunate in your you are pocket. <laughs> to have both of us in here. Usually, I'm the one running around, and yeah. he's the one dude, with the crazy that's schedule why this and everything. Took so long to put together it because took yeah. forever. This because dude, yeah. his this dude schedule, was down the street up. working on an antenna. Or I was about a, to bail a cell tower, and I was like, "Hey, what are you doing? You yeah, are, I can just come over at three like, o'clock in the yeah. afternoon." I was about it, to there's, bail. There's a lot of times. So <laughs> A lot of we'll times we could have just again. connected the two of us, but we wanted to make sure that Mr. Stubbs was here, was yeah. in the studio. Well, hey, man, thanks for having have me. Have you on. ever talked about this it. studio? It's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you, yeah, like well, a way depth. better studio. Than like, like how you have like 
like this is a love nest. You it's could do awesome. so much stuff in yeah, here. Yeah, I know, cool. and I, I just, I, I feel like I'm just not there yet because it's a little, I don't know. It's, well, I have a TV no, no, show no, no, that no, uh, I'd like to do, and this is perfect for that. You'd be the second person that wants to do TV here. Mine's good though. Mine's a winner. Like I, we're going to the what is it the is it the daytime not the daytime I mean what do they, do they do anything for the Netflix awards and stuff like where you could stream it. It's the the Golden Oscar, Globes. The Golden Globes, dude. We'll get a Golden Globe. I'm man. trying to find Guaranteed a way. Golden Golden Globe. I'm trying to find a way Glove. to keep the uh, the lights on here. So I would I would love to do something that we could. I'm thinking you know, of shooting porn. You know what? If it pays, <laughs> it plays. Let's go. What, yeah. what kind? So what, what are we talking about? Nugs? Elderly? You're <laughs> gonna bring up nugs? <laughs> I thought I would for you. <laughs> since that's your favorite format, it's not I think I'm done with yes, the show now. No, I just it's, I find it fascinating Stubbs that people like nugget porn. <laughs> <laughs> you need a bro like that, man. Stubbs you got a special the nugs. Cat. That's what we'll call it. Stubs in the nugs. Can I remove myself from this entire episode now? <laughs> now? Now you want it? Okay. No, no. All obviously, right. this is AI. This oh. whole thing has been AI. Oh, this yeah. is not yeah, real, yeah, Matt. Yeah, this is, yeah. this is oh, not real, Matt. By the way, uh, that, that is one thing I'd like to do to close out the episode. I know you've got some more badass AI shit in that phone, and you're still on the Bluetooth. I have the four the four, the four that I played. Do you want me to play one of those again? Dude, no, hey, no, did no. Did you do Jeffrey Lord and those. the uh, beaten uh, show, show us what else you got. Uh, against the tree. I don't. Because uh, I got it. I yours are the only ones. I uploaded to my Dropbox. Oh, you to play bastard! With. I mean, I can pull out my laptop. If no, you had a I got, I got, I got Jeffrey nah, nah, nah. Lord right here. But oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. I just got to look up the. Look oh, up my yeah, phone yeah, yeah. Stuff. I sent that to you. Guys. And I got to connect and all that. Yeah, Hold on, yeah. no, no, it's no. Like, no I got take it. Me I got it, homie. Yeah, I got it. Hold That's on. Cool, awesome. Cool, cool. So, what do you want to hear? You want to hear about? Uh, How many? Yeah, uh, man. I Both got, of these are references to our show. So yeah, they. I got Jeff just hanging out with Jeff. This one time, I was out in the yard. With my dad, um, and this raccoon came out of the brush and kept hissing at us and just wouldn't leave us alone. So my dad chased it around the yard and, uh, and finally grabbed it by the tail and started bashing its head into a tree just over and over and over. That was a family Christmas. I'll never forget. So... The <laughs> another one too, isn't the other one? Yeah, there's another one. Oh yeah, this there's is a the, great the, one. The, the, HBO the great one. thing about this, okay, is that oh my, God. <laughs> it sounds just like it him. does. Yeah. I have some it's Javier crazy, too. Man. The great thing about have you this, not heard the Javier one? I yeah, on your episode. Yeah. yeah, the AI. What's great about the AI is that you can make it say the most. <laughs> of, of, Crazy Vile. ass shit ever. Yeah, that would never happen. Now, did you come up with these scripts? No, we it's been on our There's show. a long. So we used to have a oh. buddy of ours named Bigfoot, <laughs> and the story was: I think one time he was on our show, and Matt just turned to him and goes, "Have you ever seen your dad smash naked. a raccoon against a tree? <laughs> your dad naked outside? Smash yeah, smashing a raccoon, a raccoon, against, raccoon against, against a tree. tree. Out of he looked nowhere. Like, no, the dude. He looked like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Man, Bigfoot is a big dude, and he's very scary looking. Like <laughs> he's very intimidating. We want him yeah. for security. Oh He'll be yeah. our security once things get rolling. <laughs> Just don't bash. You know things yeah. against the tree or, or do. killing it. I don't know what yeah, I have. Send a message. Yeah. I don't know what I have. A hey, this is here. So Javier from the uh, Funky Panther podcast, yes. and I just want to remind you to be sure to spay and neuter pets as well as yourself. Just reach down and cut those balls right off, and maybe fry them up like a set of calf fries and serve them at Thanksgiving dinner for the family. Also, try and relax your anus. So everything re- everything ends in relaxing your anus. <laughs> you have to relax your anus. I don't know what this one is. You don't want to be up tight. Hey, this is Javier from the Funky Panther podcast. And when I want to get sexy with my lady, I like to turn the lights this down low and crank the Jerry Jones Town Massacre up. Nothing will get you and your lady in the mood more than the ridiculous thoughts and ideas pouring out of Dustin and Matt's mouths. It's like an audio injection for your libido and stamina. Every time I listen to them, I can go for hours and hours. Even right now, I'm getting a little excited thinking about their voices <laughs> echoing through the bedroom. And See, that one makes me body. feel like I got to take a shower. And hers. So, <laughs> anyway. Is it, and I mean, this, this is all just Later the Javier. program. It's been good, man. Works. If you look at it and you think about it like someone's reading a script, it's perfect. And have you ever seen True Detective? Hold on. Did, oh, no. did you come up with that script? Dude, there's yeah, no way. Okay. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You're definitely going to have to do a v- the listen discretion. Your discretion you is discretion. Sure, right sure. But if you go say ahead. it, it will air. Yeah, so it's going to air. So go ahead. Let's do it. So have you ever seen True Detective? 
No. Okay. Season two. Well, there's a season two, True and uh, what's that guy's name? Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell's in it, and he comes. And he's awesome. Runs. It's great. Yeah, the acting he's a, by him is great. He's a police detective, something slime ball, something like that. But his, his his son gets fucked. His with. son gets picked on at school, and so his yeah. son's autistic, and what he does is he gets bullied, and so the <laughs> Colin Farrell goes to the bully's house and gets the bully outside and then gets the dad outside. I feel like I've seen this. Then beats the shit out of the dad in front of the bully. I think I've seen it, yeah. And he spits this out and now, on, is on this, the Fort Worth. It's th- kind of funny. This is, this is from the movie? Or yeah, this, this is, is a script from the movie. This is the this script. Is lines from the movie. Okay. But so, the not person anything saying it up. is not Someone you Colin know. Farrell and it's... I go back to the thing of what makes things funny when people are... If you ever bully another kid again, I'll come back and bother with your mother on this goddamn lawn. <laughs> how, was, how, was, how did HBO not win a Golden was Globe that, for that? Whose voice was that? Was that Jeffrey I'm not Lord? Saying, no, I don't know what you're talking about. What? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's funny uh, about AI is making them say things that's the that they line never that's would been say. on cable TV. Oh, man, the strongest that, parental advisory has how, to go on this episode. How is that episode not huge? I want like you to that, believe that. That should through. be in the Smithsonian not, of greatest, not. greatest TV lines ever. Play it again, man. I love <laughs> it. Play it again. It's so great. Just one more time. One more time, we can, we can quit the show. All right, you're asking for this. <laughs> if there's any issues, the guy that says you this already has played to it, so. uh, does he come know that this down. is a thing? Yeah, I sent it to him. I was like, "This is the most insane thing I've ever done." <laughs> Do it again, please. One more time. If you ever bully another kid again, <laughs> well, that blew it. God damn. All right, hold on. So bad. If you ever bully another kid again, I'll come back and. Okay. All right, that's enough. Jesus. Would you like for me to no, pull out my laptop and have you say it? <laughs> No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I hope your preacher I'm doesn't listen to this episode. Yeah, if he pastor. does, tell him, "Hey, man, it was I got hijacked. Oh, I learned hey, a lesson." By the this way, show, um, I, I my, my a friend of mine is an ordained priest now. Congratulations! Mm-hmm. And what's, I what's, have what's their name? I have three of his books right here. Sweet, Mr. Mark Nobles. I thought you were going to say Joe. Does Savage. he know that you <laughs> once did a commercial? Hey guys, it's your old buddy Andrew <laughs> Turner from the Fort Worth Roots podcast. I'm here to talk Definitely. to you about erectile dysfunction. I've never had it, but I bet those boys from the Jerry Jonestown massacre have. They seem to be the type that enjoys shoving their <laughs> into mountains of cocaine, See, and that can this, totally this lead to erectile news. dysfunction. So yeah, take it from me, your good buddy and friend Andrew, to never stick your <laughs> to a mountain of cocaine, no matter how tempting it might be. And also subscribe and follow the Fort Worth Roots podcast on all social podcast. media platforms and Dude. podcasting apps. I got an idea. <laughs> Please put that, that all his vocals right there with what he just said to Joe Biden. Joe Biden's uh, video AI. Uh, well, like can probably that, do where that. he just like said, that. "Hey, I, 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 like that." Did does does um. Uh, the other one you did about the mayor. That's a little controversial. Well, bleep it, man. I mean, if you think you got a shot at Do you at remember Maddie? what you hey said? Hey, guys, it's your old buddy, Andrew. And when I'm not busy swinging raccoons around by their tails and smashing their heads into trees, I do a podcast called Fort Worth Roots. Every one of you listening to this right now should like and subscribe to it. I started doing this podcast as a way to reach out to local Fort Worth folks that do good things in our community, but I've turned it into an excuse to pursue the great Mayor Maddie Parker for a one-on-one interview to express my love for her. Wow. See, with the angle of having a microphone in front of her and doing an interview, it won't make the secret date that I've so, set up seem so creepy. What's wait, 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 wait. Parker? wait. Why do you bring this down? What, what, what's un- I mean, because we've already heard together. it, but what's unnerving Please. about this is that it almost sounds fucking plausible <laughs> it sounds perfect like i'm i'm team i'm team andrew for uh maddie park like i'm yeah. I, I want this yeah. to happen i, I, this I, I have been messaging happen. her and sending uh, she might respond now hey, man i'm in her dms there i've emailed go. the city you know but yeah. uh, she's a very busy lady so so we this, have this certainly will not help <laughs> well, I don't know, man. I'm going to tell you. you I'm going to tell you. It sounds kind of plausible. Yeah. AI, AI is the wave of the future. I think you got a shot. So I'm going to tell you right now what's not going to help is we have the Jerry Johnson Massacre have uh, an opportunity in front of us to where we're going to start doing live shows once a month 
in front of a live studio audience. What and the fuck? That's awesome. The <laughs> first guest I wanted to get on. Where's the studio? It's it's not a studio. It's a venue. Well, yeah, but um, the first guest I want to get on is Maddie. Good, I'd like to sit down and talk to good her. Good fucking and be luck. Good. Yeah, man. She's, um, she's very this. cool. Listen, we know if you listen to our show this week that we just had with uh, Susie. No, no, no. With Teresa, uh, oh, Teresa and Rita. Right, right, right. From uh, yeah, the, fire, the public. Yeah. We can have a decent normal show. I right, mean, we right. Can do this. Yeah. We've done this in the past where you have a decent, and especially if someone shows up. Teresa was the most unhinged person on that show. Probably. <laughs> I mean, episode. it was the first time. <laughs> yeah. Like, when we were done, I was I like, man. Hey, hey, Jerry Jonestown Massacre did not say that. Right? Oh, yeah. No, I got it was done, here on the Fort like, Worth route. Man, Matt and I were pretty <laughs> sterile on that show. That's kind of wild. It, so this guys, is the first time <laughs> we were pretty sterile. You guys take some um, muscle relaxers or something? Yeah. But or I think when we're doing it in front of a, a live studio audience, and if we can, the idea is to have, when we do these shows once a month, we're going to have a big name out there. Mm-hmm. Or at least someone that you know, people would want to hear from. And I would like our first one at this venue to be Fort Worth Roots to be Maddie Parker. Oh, damn. I thought I was in the running. Well, I mean, if you show up, she oh, probably <laughs> will yeah. show up. I no, would like to sit saying, down as, with as her. As your first live studio yeah. uh, interview, it should be. No well, alcohol, Dustin no drinks. You. He left that on I just want to sit down and talk to her and have a, have a decent conversation yeah. that it, a lot of, that will appeal to a lot of people. And and reach a lot of people um, more than out, out of all the local podcasts here in Fort Worth. You guys have the biggest reach by far, so that would make the most sense. That's yeah. what a lot of people definitely. Think. Well, What's your it's, first question? I know my truth. first question is going to be: Do you fart? <laughs> that's all right. Not, well, that's not going to help <laughs> her come on the show. No, well, I have actual logistical yeah, like, questions about the city of from? Fort Worth. Yeah, like. I, are you going to bring stuff? <laughs> Is he going to be allowed to attend this? He might have to be sick that episode. <laughs> He'll be sitting at the temple going, where is everybody? And Man. I'll be down. Oh, there. dude, did I tell you? No, we're doing the show down here. And by then, mm-hmm. it'll be over. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll, I'll be pissed. I, w- I, would, I would seriously like to sit down with her and talk real Fort Worth stuff. Yeah, hell yeah. Real Fort Worth stuff. Um, we have the election coming up Is uh, it already in May. That's this May? Yeah. For what? Oh, because they do two-year terms, right. I, for, I believe so. For yeah. governor? <laughs> no. Just kidding. For mayor. We have a lot of seats up. Um, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Vice yeah. mayor. We had a guy in Haltom City that we followed that was trying to run for mayor. His we did? application was quickly rejected. Because he's from Haltom? Charles Clark. Oh, is he already gotten the X name? Huh? He's got the X name. We knew that was gonna happen. Yeah. Hey, uh, but what I would, about, I would uh, seriously we had a, we had like to have dude, a real Kurt, conversation. We had that yeah. one cat yeah. that was running for uh, something over in um, Colleyville. Colleyville, and then we had a girl. Yeah. Remember that one girl that wanted to be a? I think it was uh, city council, council or city something. council. She came on. She was awesome uh, from West Fort Worth. Yeah, she, and so we had we had good decent your conversation. You've, well. Yeah, you've had these conversations. For we've some had serious shows. Yeah. We've had national people on our show. We've had people of stature on our show. It's time yeah. for Maddie Parker. Uh, Maddie Parker's in good company. We'll take care of her. We're not yeah. going to embarrass her. We're I'm not. I'm from Arlington, so I don't fucking care. Until she breaks. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> You're ruining it. Sorry. Here's the thing. If she breaks the ice. <laughs> You're ruining it. Then it's on. Then yeah. we'll break the ice. Right, then we'll right. get Abbott. But, it, it, I mean. Oh, he'll never be on your show. Dude, he's talked so much noise about him. Yeah, I know. I mean, if she if she's like just sitting there talking, drops a C bomb, then we're in. Oh, we yeah. Know we're I in. know. Yeah, that's going to happen <laughs> for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. And on that note. I have one last question. Matt is gay. I we knew that he doesn't not. have AIDS, and he <laughs> okay. wants to thank his friends. <laughs> but I don't have AIDS. <laughs> can I get you guys back on the show? And this time, can it not take fucking six yeah. months to get no. you? Here? You tell us when. We'll I thought, man, honestly, I didn't know. I thought, honestly, I thought you had like you, you see those people that the mobile meth labs that go to yeah. Walmart and they go the, like someone goes into I get, buy one. all the buy all I the, showed you. Buy all the uh, what is it the, the uh, mobile the, podcast the, the nasal the you thought Andrew was a meth head? Uh, no, I just thought uh, that was a his smurf. podcast a smurf. A smurf. Yeah, no, I thought smurf. yeah, I thought that was his rig and stuff. I didn't know he had a pro studio that he's working. And my on problem with got, uh, like a <laughs> rehearsal spot and like a gun range and stuff and yeah. all that. The it's problem just, with just for crossbow with River right. Oaks is you start wondering about the gypsies. I'm they're sorry, mainly in white settlement. They're not here. They're in the white settlement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in the white settlement. They're cool, man. They're sweet. 
They're very sweet. You, you got to go overseas for that. You got to. The hair, other problem they have hairy nipples, <laughs> but they're sweet. Is the other problem is I'm really close to Johnny Govea right now. Love Johnny. That guy. What? He wants you to come watch on? out. He's going to kill him on your show. What? Period. Watch out for Johnny. I is, love Johnny. Is he on the? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Johnny's the best. Is he an yeah. agent? You watch out. What are you doing? He's CIA. Oh, doing? He's CIA. You think yeah. he's CIA? Johnny Govea. Johnny CIA. Govea. Oh, man. CIA. He's Secret a special agent. agent. Yeah. He's a badass. Watch I could buy that. I could buy I that. Know, I could I buy know, that. Man. He's, he's, got, he's just dumbing things down. That guy could disarm you like that. He's got I a Steven Seagal thing though, going yeah. on for sure. You know, yeah. he, he disappears for weird <laughs> long yeah. periods of time. Yeah. <laughs> and then he says, I'm just going to stay at home this weekend. He's on a mission. It means he's yeah. killing someone. Yeah, he he he's going over to Libya and like liberating people and stuff. So you gotta you gotta be easy, like yeah. Okay. I, Johnny enough, CIA. I, I was thinking about <laughs> him today. I, I need to get him back on the show because we've we've just done that one episode, and he's such a fascinating dude. So yeah, no, he's a great yeah. dude, and he yeah. lives right down the street. Yeah, right he's, down the street. Come over, over, man. We should, yeah. should have had him come over. Well, with we've us, already man. got somebody here waiting to talk. <laughs> oh, sorry, man. We'll get off. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> no, it's we're not, just being it's stupid like now, that. man. We're just BSing. I do have to take a TT though. Hey, I did need people too. How long do you think yeah. we're recording? Two hours and fourteen minutes and next, seven uh, seconds. Next, uh, next time we're going for four hours. Fuck it, let's do it all. No, we need to do a marathon. We've talked about uh, getting on the podcast together to do a, like a twenty-four hour marathon. Think we can oh, do it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Oh, we'll just fun. order food and yeah. have people roll in for we'll like guest spots. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. This we'll would all be, take this turns. We'll pop in and out. Would this not be the best spot for that? Oh yeah, this yeah. would be perfect. No, you're set up here. I'm kind of jealous. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. Well, this is way better than the temple. Yeah. Nothing, nothing is going to take away from you. The actually, could start a cult in here. Stel- uh, Dude, I, we'd temple. have to expand quickly Dude, when we start a cult. I think you a have a porn being shot down the hall. It's it might happen. I've had that thought. Has anybody course. taken that? Uh, so whose Harley is that? Uh, it's not a Harley. It's a it's, Vulcan. Oh, Vulcan! You, you take it off any sweet jumps? It doesn't do sweet jumps. It's a nine hundred cc. Motorbike and it's uh, that thing would be heavy as hell. It's not doing any jumps. Jump. Let's do it. I bet I can put a little wood ramp in the it. front. We can put a wood ramp. I could do a tabletop on the sidewalk. <laughs> I bet ramp. I know for sure I could do a tabletop. I want to see that tabletop on the next episode, right, whatever man, that let's is. Do it. Okay. Can I go pee? Go yeah, pee. And thank you thank guys you, for Andrew. being here. This hey, has been Fort Worth. We love you, Fort Worth. Please don't unfriend us because of the things that Stub said. No matter what, we love Fort Worth. We love you. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. You made it to the very end of that episode. You're a special kind of weird. Congratulations. Matt, Dustin, guys, thanks for being on the Fort Worth Roots podcast. We've been trying to cook that up for a very long time, and we finally got it put together. Um, We're going to have to put some notes together for Matt on the next episode. We want to make sure he comes back, but... uh, there's some uh, there's some improvements we could make. <laughs> Love you, Matt. That was a great episode. It was a lot of fun, and I'm uh, looking forward to doing the next one. All right, let's talk about events real quick. We got a lot of them coming up. April seventh. That's uh, this weekend, Friday. Lola's. You got to be there. It's going to be the second annual Psychedelic Panther put on by our buddy Joe Guzman. We did this last year. It was incredible. This year is going to be so much more fun. Two stages, lots of bands, lots of vendors. Uh, just going to be a great way for you to support the community and have a kick-ass time. So come check that out. Again, that's at Lola's this Friday and Saturday. Uh, next event we have coming up is going to be uh, April 20th out there at Pouring Glory. We've got a 420 event. Scott wanted to do this for you. So uh, no cover to get into the, uh, to the festivities. Uh, Denver Williams is going to be playing. There's going to be a few other people play- playing on that stage. And... Uh, just all sorts of other craziness that Scott's still kind of cooking up. But we got another meeting this week, and uh, I should have some more details for you this coming Monday, right? And then the River Oak Spring Fest Car Show, April 22nd. It's going to be a busy month, y'all. Uh, we had over 10,000 people come out to this thing last year. Classic cars, vendors, horseback riding, kayaking, zip lining, all the cool stuff out at YMCA Camp Carter. And... Uh, it's going to be great. It's on 300-something acres. I'm actually recording with the uh, CEO and president of the YMCA for this region. or so I, I'm not sure what all his title is. But anyway, somebody from YMCA is going to be here tomorrow to talk more about the YMCA and what goes on out there at Camp Carter. So that's going to be cool. So we'll have some more information, or we'll have some more information then. 
Um, there is an event going on at uh, McFly's Saturday, April 8th. Starts at 2 p.m. It's a kids free Easter egg hunt. I'm going to click on it, give you some more details. See what we got. Free egg hunt, fruit truck on site. Come let the kids hunt while you relax and enjoy some drinks. Cool. That is at McFly's. It's April 8th, Saturday. Starts at 2 p.m. Cool. All right. That's all the events. Let's talk about our sponsors, McFly's. McFly's is now a sponsor of the Fort Worth Roots Podcast. Uh, the owners out there, we're excited to uh, become part of this little uh, thing we're doing. And we've got all sorts of crazy ideas that we're working on with McFly's. Uh, I'm not going to, don't, don't think I'm going to tell you. Not until we get some uh, solid dates in line, but some really crazy stuff. So look forward to that. Go check out McFly's if you haven't been out there. Everything you can think of, uh, Back to the Future is in this place. We got hoverboards and uh, uh, just just everything. Murals all over the place. And the only thing they're missing right now is a DeLorean. But I think they might be trying to get themselves a DeLorean just so they can kind of tie it all together. That's going to be cool. But thank you to McFlies and uh, folks, go check them out. We're trying to work out a, a deal. You go in there and tell them you want the podcast deal, and they. Got something ready for you on the cheap. I don't know. We're talking about it. We'll see how that turns out. Wood Post Metalworks. Woodpostmetalworks.com. Go there for specialized uh, metal signs with or without LED backlighting, fence and gate repair or installation, light steel fabrication, industrial plasma cutting, and more. Go check them out. They do a lot of signs for businesses, a lot of custom artwork for homes, things like that. You can use offer code PODCAST817 at checkout. To save yourself 10%, excuse me, Hawk Walker Originals. Go to HawkWalker.com. They offer a huge variety of unique and personalized gifts. Also, laser engraving to customize just about anything you can think of. That's HawkWalker.com. Pouring Glory. Scott out there at Pouring Glory is waiting on you to walk in the door and be like, I heard about this place on a podcast. Um, the food is incredible. The beer is wonderful. But the people there, that's... That's why I got connected with Pouring Glory. That's why I keep going back. It's just a really great vibe. They have an excellent outdoor uh, patio area that before COVID was a parking lot, but he fenced it all in. And now every Sunday, your dog can come there anytime you want. But um, on Sundays, they do an off-the-leash uh, dog free play thing until 4 p.m. So every Sunday, go check that out. Food, beer, dog friendly. My people. Pouring Glory. It's over there, Main at South Side. You know where Old Mass was? Just east of that. Just one block east of that. So, easy to find. All right, who are we missing? Can't forget about Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck, our brother. You can find their information at roofingsolutionshauck.com or you can get them on the phone, 817-692-8496. And they give us 50% off on roofing tune-ups. They will come out there. They'll check all your pipe jacks and vents, make sure they don't need any caulking or sealant, and uh, just kind of survey and see if there's any kind of damage that uh, that, you did, that you were unaware of. Anyway, 50% off just for being a podcast listener. That's pretty cool. Again, the phone number is 817-692-8496. Give them a call. Don't you dare use another roofer. I, I, if I find out just i'd be very upset okay that's events that's sponsors what else how about that ai stuff isn't that crazy they're gonna have to they're, they're gonna have to make it like highly illegal to do that because you just heard what they made me say <laughs> you could do that with anybody you take their voice you just got to sample it and if if anybody out there has any kind of um public uh exposure you're going to be able to take their audio clips, plug them into that machine, and then get them to say whatever you want, like a sock puppet. That's not good. It's not good. Makes me nervous. I don't know. I'm not important enough to really be worried about it, but uh, it makes me nervous for other folks. And, you know, it's already hard enough to tell the difference in, you know, what's real and what's not uh, in the media and on the news. So now it's just going to be impossible. So cheers to that. Uh, once again, Matt, Dustin, guys, thanks for being on the show. And let's do it again real soon. Oh, uh, see, do I still have that phone number in front of me? Nope, of course I don't. 
you can call us whenever we're uh, we're going to start trying to do some live video stuff. i got to work it out. I'm not really sure how to do it. We tried. We did a Facebook live thing a couple nights ago with Matthew Broyles and Tristan Morris. And I'm trying to find that real quick. What we did was we just set the phone up. My I've got two cell phones. I've got this, my phone, and then the Fort Worth Roots phone. And uh, just let one do the Facebook Live thing. And it was kind of a mess because you couldn't hear what was actually going on in the recording. So whenever we had somebody call in on the other phone, you couldn't hear the conversation. So anyway, i got to figure that out. I'll just call Dustin. He knows what to do. But you can always call the Fort Worth Roots Podcast hotline, and you can leave us a message. Ask questions, leave comments, give us the quote for the day, whatever you want to do. 817-988-1292, and it's in the show notes, so there's that. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Happy Monday. Hope you're off to a good start, and uh, don't forget, this weekend, uh, big event, Psychedelic Panther, uh, myself, Joe Guzman, and everybody else that has worked so hard to put this thing on for you would be so thankful to see you out there. And I'll have the Fort Worth Roots banner up. Uh, I'll be taking pictures with people, posting it on social media. So you want to come out there and be part of the team, uh, we'd love to see you. All right. That's enough out of me. I'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.